on the Rebel Sports Network from Learfield. This is UNLV Running Rebel Basketball, brought to you by Boyd Gaming. Experience life rewarded with Boyd Rewards, proud sponsor of UNLV Athletics. And by Finlay Chevrolet. Finlay Chevrolet is your home of the Woo, located on the 215 Beltway between Rainbow and Jones. This is Running Rebel Warm-Up. Presented by the Las Vegas Power Professionals, IBEW Local 357, and Southern Nevada NECA. In the New Jersey Lottery. That's a shame. It'd be a different ball game completely if it had that happen. <laughs> but nonetheless, we're in store for a really good game. A really good Big East, a Big East team that by the consensus probably should have been in the NCAA tournament yep. is the number one overall seed here in the NIT this year. Um, and with that said, the Rebels got their work cut out for them because Shaheen Holloway does a great job in preparing his guys to get ready to play. This is a, a Seton Hall team that really attacks the basket. They've got three outstanding guards. They've got a big man who is an offensive rebounding machine. And they pose all sorts of challenges for the Runner Rebels. However, the Runner Rebels are playing terrific basketball. They continue to find ways to win. They won at Princeton, a unique style of basketball. And they, they beat a red-hot Boston College team at the Thomas and Mack using an 11-0 run in the second half of that game. Yeah, and you just mentioned that the Runner Rebels have, have won 12 of their last 15. And they're just playing some really good basketball. And I think the biggest thing that we're seeing is that they're continuing to get better each game out. In some facet, they're showing improvement, and that's why they continue to win. Obviously, adding Caleb Boone back to the lineup last game to get him back out there has a big game, as well as does his brother Keelan. And, of course, the super freshman, Deedon Thomas Jr., leading the show in the backcourt. But, again, you're facing a different type of animal. The Rebels have played physical teams. Obviously, San Diego State kind of comes to mind, even Boise State, uh, or even Creighton, for a matter of fact, who's in the same conference as these guys. But this is a different type of team than what the Rebels have seen in terms of guards, strong guards, Ball heavy, like to get to the paint, but then also in terms of their bigs, they're going to be very physical and crashing the glass. That's a strong suit for this Pirates team. Absolutely, and it's a it's a Seton Hall team uh, talking to their people that has really kind of caught fire here in the NIT. They said that uh, you know that very frustrated, disappointed that the fourth place team in the Big East did not get a bid to the NCAA tournament. So the first half of their first game, they said they were a little iffy. But it seems like this team kind of flipped the switch and uh, got things going. And a big challenge uh, against this big physical Seton Hall team. And the size of their guards is something that uh, the Rebels have to be wary of. 6'4", 6 6'6", six, six, and 6'6". And six, six. Uh, this is a big backcourt. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that kind of stands out. And, and this is the kind of situation where you're going to miss the size and physicality um, and defensive prowess of Luis Rodriguez. Yep. A bigger guard that will be able to match up very well with the backcourt and the wings here for Seton Hall. But nonetheless, the Rebels are going to have to find a way to disrupt them. The one thing I noticed is they, they typically play their starters, almost all their starters play 30 minutes a game. They go very lightly into the bench, one, maybe two guys. So the Rebels may have an opportunity to try to wear them down somewhat. But again, they've got home court advantage in this smaller gym that's on campus where they traditionally don't play. So again, the Rebels are going to have to play within themselves and find some energy and try to pick apart this scouting report to find some things that's going to work for them to try to get a win. Yeah, the, the record in this little gym, Walsh Gymnasium, on the campus here at Seton Hall, they've won like 35 of 37, but they only average about one game a year here. So uh, to put that in context, but it, it's a very, very unusual environment for a college basketball team to play its game in. Seat games in Seton Hall typically plays at the Prudential Center, uh, which is where the New Jersey Devils play, a big, you know, 18, 20,000 seat arena. Uh, but they could not get it available on short notice for these NIT games. So they're playing their third straight game in this little 1,300-seat gym. It's, it's a bandbox. Everybody yeah. is right on top of you. Uh, as I mentioned, 1,300 seats, uh, maybe. That's what the announced capacity is. And uh, the Rebels, even though they played at Pepperdine this year, 
that place was with two or three times the size of this. Yeah, this is going to be definitely the smallest environment the Rebels have played in so far this year. Um, even when they had the one game uh, at the beginning of the year against, or at the beginning of the new calendar year at the Cox Pavilion. I mean, that seats more than you're going to fit in this place here. Uh, but again, it's a unique environment. But with that said, it might get a little loud. But the Rebels are going to have to try to manage all the different variables that come into this, whether it's ball pressure, whether it's rebounding, whether it's foul trouble, whether it's crowd noise, um, whether it's the big Pirates backdrop that's behind one end of the court. So, again, there's a lot of kind of variables outside of the game that they're going to have to handle. But nonetheless, I think the group is prepared. They look focused and locked in, and it's going to be a good one here tonight. The additional fact is the Rebels have been a very good road team. They're 8-3 and three on the road this year, and, and that's as good at a road record as we've seen from a runner-rebel team uh, in, in quite a while. A lot of reasons for that, but I, I think number one is this team is together. This yeah. team is a group that enjoys playing, enjoys being on the road together, and enjoys being on the court together. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing. We've heard Coach Kevin Kruger talk about how his guys just really enjoy each other and spending company, and spending time in, in, the, in the company which in with what they are in. Um, because typically when you're at home, I mean, you, you go through your routine, but then you, you go back to your apartment or wherever you are with your girlfriend or with your friends, and you've kind of got your routine set, so you don't have opportunities to be with your teammates. But when you're on the road, you're either going to enjoy your teammates and enjoy the company and hang out and spend time together, or you're going to isolate in your room, and that can really fracture some groups. These guys like to hang out. They typically hang out in the general meeting room at the hotel. They like to hang out. They like to chat. They joke. Uh, so it's a very tight-knit group, and I think that's why they're having so much success on the road because they really rally around each other and band together, kind of us-against-the-world mentality, and that's what you're going to have to have when you're here in New Jersey specifically for this game. The other thing to consider is travel. And, yeah, Mountain West travel is, is difficult. The Rebels obviously fortunate that they don't have to fly commercial uh, when traveling in the conference. It's a, it's a huge, huge bonus for the team. But for these two trips back to New Jersey, I made a joke of it at the beginning, but it's serious. Uh, the Rebels have been on planes for a total of about uh, 15 or 16 hours over the last week. I know they're young. They're yeah. 20, you know, 21 years old. Uh, certainly it takes a toll on us. But at some point, all of it is going to take a wear and tear on the team. Yeah, yeah without a doubt it does. And the Rebels are, are very fortunate and, and blessed and grateful to be in the position which they are in to travel within the Mountain West Conference. Um, obviously some of the amenities they have, those aren't provided or available here for the NIT tournament. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of travel. But I think one thing, again, they are young. But Coach Kevin Kruger has a really good pulse on his group, and he's done a good job of managing them travel and practice and court time versus film time and kind of mental prep yep. throughout the course of the season. Um, and I don't, I don't recall a time when they've been weary or leery on the road, and I think the people that are probably having the worst time of it are us because yep. we're older. I got a kink in my neck from last night, got a terrible pillow, <laughs> but I think we're in a position where we're probably feeling the – the struggles and the grunt and the grind of the travel more so than these young men are. Well, they, they're excited to play, and that's great to see. And why not? The winner gets a trip to the NIT semifinals uh, in Indianapolis next week, and uh, the winner will play Georgia, who edged Ohio State last night on the road. And the Rebels are kind of hoping to do the same thing against the number one overall seed, the Seton Hall Pirates. Yeah, and when you get to this stage of the game, I mean, again, coming into this game or before last night, there was only eight teams left in the NIT. And you could probably make an argument that all of them probably could have had a bone to pick to be able to get in the NCAA tournament. You don't. But this is a great opportunity not only to kind of, you know what I mean, say you know what to the committee yep. by winning this thing or going as far as you can. But if you make it to the Final Four, you're probably in a spot to where you should have been in the tournament. Uh, but you're also putting yourself on a good trajectory going into next season. And I've also said this is good for these guys to be seen, a national brand like UNLV to come back to the East Coast, and also it's not going to hurt recruiting to any stretch. Uh, uh, it already has. It's right. already done all that. Right. And it just it, anything uh, additional will just help it. Right. it uh, the, the win on Saturday or Sunday against Boston College in front of that terrific crowd at the Thomas and Mac, I think, was a, a huge, huge thing for the program. And uh, the Rebels... Uh, uh, trying to add to it against the number one overall seed, the Pirates of Seton Hall. Fans, remember, the friendly staff of Pueblo Medical Imaging is eager to take care of all of your radiology needs and offer same-day and next-day availability with top-of-the-line, state-of-the-art equipment. They're open seven days a week with early morning and evening appointments to accommodate all patient schedules. Well, it, it's a quick scout. Will Saxon had the scout, and I had a chance to sit down with Will, have that conversation and our regular conversation with head coach Kevin Kruger. All that comes up next. You're listening to Runner Rebel Warm-Up on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield.
Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Deep Eddy Vodka, a high-quality vodka with an even higher purpose, to bring people together for good times. We take sunshine, stellar vibes, and laid-back fun and bottle it up for the world to enjoy. The result? A refreshingly clean, real vodka made with real ingredients, ready for you to enjoy however, wherever, and with whomever you like. Vodka is for fun. Please date drink responsibly. Deep Eddy Vodka is a product of Deep Eddy Distiller and Company, Austin, Texas. 40% alcohol by volume, distilled by corn. Injured in a car accident or at work? Don't go it alone. Call Shook and Stone, Nevada's premier injury and disability law firm. With over 25 years of experience, we've helped over 20,000 Nevadans recover over $1 billion in compensation and benefits. At Shook and Stone, we understand the challenges you face after an accident or injury. Medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering. And insurance companies that put their interests before yours. But you don't have to go it alone. Our team of experienced attorneys and staff is here to fight for the compensation and benefits you deserve. Whether you've been injured in a car accident, workplace injury, construction accident, medical malpractice, or any other type of personal injury, Shook and Stone have the knowledge and resources to protect your rights. For three decades, Shook and Stone has been here for you and your family. You're not alone. Call Shook and Stone at 702-GET-MORE for a free consultation. It won't cost you anything to see if we can help. The official partner of UNLV Athletics. Shook! And Stone Call 702 get more. Welcome back to Stone Hall here in uh, East Orange, New Jersey. East Orange, South Orange, around the border, something like that. In any event, we're 10 minutes from the Newark Airport where we were less than a week ago. Uh, the Rudder Rebels take it on Seton Hall, the Pirates out of the Big East in the uh, quarterfinal round of the NIT. Rebels uh, continue to play winning basketball, and uh, that's that's been the formula. Uh, lots of different ways of doing it, but but getting it done. And a uh, big challenge this evening here in New Jersey. Our guest on Runner Rebel Warm-Up, assistant coach Will Saxon, who's got the scout of the Pirates. But, uh, Will, the, the, the two wins uh, at Princeton and, and then against Boston College, uh, just uh, more examples of how this team over the second half of the season has figured out ways to come out on top. Yeah, uh, two wins, one on the road, one at home, two very different styles in Princeton and Boston College. Uh, different guys in and out in the lineup in both games. Uh, guys have adapted, worked really hard. Their prep's been unbelievable um, all year, and it's paid off again and again. It seems as the year has gone on, the prep has gotten more efficient, more effective, and uh, just guys learning each other, learning systems, and, and now it's, it's almost like it's a bit of a machine. Yeah, as we've had injuries and ins and outs of the lineup throughout the year, and guys have become more and more comfortable as we've gotten more and more reps together, even though we don't have a perfect lineup or had everybody healthy at the same time in quite a while or at all, um, it's gotten closer, um, which has helped. Yeah, 14 minutes is, is the number you're looking for. Yeah. That's, that's the, the total amount of time this year that you guys have had a full roster, but nonetheless, the Rebels overcoming that and other things to, to get here. All right, turning our attention to uh, Seton Hall, uh, finished fourth in the Big East, and we know that that's a tremendous accomplishment in and of itself. Somewhat surprising that they didn't get into the NCAA tournament, something their coach has been quite vocal about, and I think justifiably so. But uh, they're the number one seed here in the bracket that the Runner Rebels are in uh, for, for the NIT, and a reason for that, this is a really good basketball team. Yeah, really good East, a good Big East opponent. Um, they'll try and turn you over defensively, um, get out in transition. They're really, really physical defensively and offensively. Offensively, they're going to get downhill, get in the paint, put it up on the rim, and then go get it off the offensive glass. Sounds a lot like a team uh, the Rebels are very familiar with in the Mountain West Conference in terms of just throwing it up there. But, but this is a team with a lot of skill in the backcourt as well. Yeah, really talented backcourt. Richmond, Dawes, really good scorers, really good playmakers. Um, get downhill, um, not just to put it on the rim because they score it, but then they're bigs. Uh, Betty Yako and Davis are going to go get it off the rim if they miss. It's a really, really physical basketball team. It'll be a battle in the paint every possession. 
But it sounds that as if uh, one of the things the Rebels are going to have to do is stay in front of the basketball, try to limit the, uh, the straight line drives that Seton Hall gets. Absolutely. Staying in front of the basketball um, and try and get, force more contested shots. Um, and then obviously that puts you in a better position to rebound when you're not having to help and draw two to the ball. Um, so that'll be huge. What about attacking uh, what Seton Hall does defensively? This is uh, a runner rebel team that was so efficient against Boston College with only one turnover in the entire basketball game. I'm not sure uh, you're going to be able to repeat that because that is an incredibly lofty, uh, lofty number. But at the same time, uh, the Rebels, uh, despite all the changes in the lineup and all the, the guys, as you said, ins and outs of the lineup, uh, uh, getting much more efficient on the offensive end. Uh, yeah, uh, the performance against Boston College was unbelievable. Our guys shared the ball at the highest level. I think it was 17-1 to in assist to turnover. Um, Tonight, we'll need to, again, get in the paint and be really, really strong with the basketball because just getting to the paint will be the first step and then making the right play after and be willing to make that one more pass will be huge. Uh, different environment in the sense that uh, 1,300 seats in a, in a tiny little gym uh, and, and a different look behind the basket. The rims are a little different. The nets are a little different just in terms of the, the, the way they look. I know the guy's got a chance to shoot around and certainly we'll, uh, we'll get a chance to, to see it again before the game. But uh, uh, any concerns about adjusting to, to this environment? Uh, no, it'll be an awesome environment. Our guys will be really excited. They are really excited. Um, it'll, it'll be a really fun atmosphere, a uh, historic atmosphere, Big East game, our biggest opponent. Um, our guys, will be, our guys will be ready to play. All right, last question, uh, some specifics, a couple of items uh, that you know the Rebels are going to absolutely have to do in order to get a win and move on to the semis in Indianapolis next week. Have to be strong with the basketball, take the right shots, don't turn it over um, to prevent their transition. Off, uh, defensively stay in front of the basketball because they're going to try and get in the paint, and then we have to box out, have to hit bodies on every shot. Coach, appreciate it very much. As always, uh, great intel, and uh, see if the Rebels can get another one and move on here in the NIT. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Assistant Coach Will Saxon, our guest. Take a break. Come back. Sit down with Head Coach Kevin Kruger. You're listening to Run a Rebel Warm-Up on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. It's time for a wellness tip from Intermountain Health, official health sponsor of the UNLV Rebels. Do your feet often ache after attending a Rebels game? Here's something you might not know. If they don't, they should. We're not the sitting Rebels. We stand all game. We stomp our feet. We cheer for every play. That being said, if your foot soreness continues, may we suggest visiting one of our urgent care locations at your earliest convenience. Learn more at intermountainnv.org. Premium checking from America First Credit Union is so much more than a regular checking account. It's a saves you money, makes life easier, always has your back account. Because it's absolutely loaded with fantastic benefits and features. In fact, it comes stocked with so much awesome stuff. It was voted best perks by money.com. So make sure you're rocking more than a checking account. Head to America First and apply for the exclusive protection, perks, and paybacks of premium checking today. Subject to membership eligibility and conditions. Federally insured by NCUA. What schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Deep Eddy Vodka, a high-quality vodka with an even higher purpose, to bring people together for good times. We take sunshine, stellar vibes, and laid-back fun and bottle it up for the world to enjoy. The result? A refreshingly clean, real vodka made with real ingredients, ready for you to enjoy however, wherever, and with whomever you like. Vodka is for fun. Please day drink responsibly. Deep Eddy Vodka is a product of Deep Eddy Distilling Company, Austin, Texas, 40% alcohol by volume, distilled by corn. Welcome back to Running Rebel Warm-Up, presented by the Las Vegas Power Professionals, IBEW Local 357, and Southern Nevada NECA. Welcome back to Back to New Jersey, as the Running Rebels uh, move into the quarterfinal round of the NIT after the 
victory at home against Boston College over the weekend and uh, for their troubles. Not only did they get another cross-country trip right back where they were, but uh, to take on a really tough team out of the Big East, the Seton Hall Pirates. Our guest on Runner Rebel Warm-Up, of course, head coach Kevin Kruger. And, Coach, uh, let's start with, with the BC game because uh, it was a game where neither team was – at times able to, to get in sort of any kind of flow, but the Rebels were able to, to kind of battle their way through it and come up with another win, another different way of winning a game. Yeah, I'm a, a good another team effort, um, another good you know college basketball game from start to finish. Uh, both teams went on a couple runs. We were, uh, in this one, we were just able to kind of have, have a little bit bigger of a run, um, and that's kind of what ended up being the difference in the game. And... Uh, it's a game of runs. That's that's normal, and that's usually what happens. But uh, when we need to get a stop, we got to stop. When we need to get a good look, we got a good look. Uh, guys just did a good job of of kind of competing whichever way the the flow of the game was going. And uh, now I thought uh, again, it was a, the the best part about it. I think was uh, of course the crowd and the energy and the and the fans on a bonus game. But uh, at the same time, you know, we've now we've now played a historic program and, and venue at, at Princeton. Um, we've got a home game that couldn't have gone any better, and now here we are. We get another historic venue and a, and a great program in Seton Hall. So um, all in all, this, is, this has been a, a great postseason for us, and, uh, and I know the guys are having fun and enjoying it. And looking to continue it. Um, another note just about that Boston College game, one turnover in the game, and it wasn't from your guards. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, very unique. Uh, even at halftime, I saw that number, and I, I, I just kind of assumed it was a, it was a misprint, really. But uh, I knew we hadn't turned it over very much. I just didn't, I didn't think it was zero. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, when you talk about the difference in a game, uh, a game that could have gone either way, of course, uh, it, you know, you, you point to little things like that. You know, but the fact that uh, we were able to get, you know, if we averaged ten turnovers a game for round numbers and we got nine more shots up at the rim than we usually do and uh or than than we would have so uh, that's a, that's a huge part of the game um and it ended up being a huge part i think of why we were able to hold on well the rebels uh, as i said for their troubles uh get to come back to uh about 10 minutes from uh where we were when on on thursday uh when we flew back to las vegas crazy scheduling i doubt very much any other team has ever had to go through it but they, it doesn't seem to bother the guys at all no this group uh, they have fun with it they uh, they enjoy the the being around each other they enjoy uh you know the, being in the airport they're hanging out they're talking they're laughing um more so than any other any other group recently um that probably since I even started coaching, they're uh, they're not just glued to their phones in in 15 different places in the airport. They hang out together, um, they eat with each other, they sit next to each other, and uh, they just enjoy being around each other. And uh, even on the flights, you know, they they they're laughing and joking on a, 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 when, when we know a lot of them are uncomfortable. And uh, but uh, they they're just having fun. They 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 enjoy playing. They enjoy this part of their career. And, uh, and uh, it, it's fun to be a part of right now. It certainly is. Well, uh, the, uh, the opponent this evening, uh, Seton Hall, is, uh, is a team. They finished fourth in the Big East, and we have seen through the, the postseason play just how good the Big East was. This is a tremendous challenge. It is. It's a, again, it's a unique challenge, and, um, not only just in, as we talk about in every game pro- provides kind of a unique challenge, but even in the last three, they've been almost – uh, not drastically different, but they've also they've been very different. You know, each team has a unique kind of DNA, and and uh, Princeton, of course, being an extreme. Uh, Boston College did, did a lot of really good things, uh, and, and Seton Hall, I think, provides a, a little bit different challenge because they have so many guys that can attack the basket, and uh, when you have so many guys that can attack um, advantages, uh, it, it, it's hard to guard. You know, because eventually they find a, a breakdown. And so our biggest challenge tonight will just be uh, not having those breakdowns, knowing who we're guarding. You know, as you and I have talked about, when you're playing somebody you haven't played before, knowing personnel is is vital. And you have to understand what you're willing to, what you want to take away and what you're willing to live with. And uh, and Seton Hall is just going to be another great test for us. It'll be an unbelievable crowd, historic venue. And so uh, I, I know the guys are excited, and I know we are as well. It is a it is a different venue. It's small. It's uh, I guess a word would be intimate, mm-hmm. uh, and and it, even to the point where the rims and the nets are small. And and I mean in in terms of their their look, uh, 
guys adjust? How, how, how much of a factor do you think the environment could be? Well, I think it'll be a, a huge factor. I mean, I, I know I think it's listed at, at 1,200, um, but, you know, you can hear the, the, the passion of the crowd when you watch the games. And, uh, and, but also, you know, sometimes in the NIT, you know, you, you worry about this, you worry about that. The thing we haven't had to worry about so far is, uh, you know, the venue, the, the, the pride of the, the places down the two road trips that we've had. Um, so there's going to be a great atmosphere, but uh, yeah, I mean backdrops can be a little a little different. But uh, no, guys shot around yesterday, and and uh, we're feeling good. And but I, I know they're looking forward to it. It'll be loud. It'll be uh, it'll be fun. Um, and it'll it, it's uh, you know at this point in March and at this point in, in any postseason or any tournament for that matter, it's uh, you're you're, you're in, in kind of a really fun stage. No, no doubt about it, and uh, it's been a fun ride thus far, and the Rebels look to keep it going. Uh, Coach, really appreciate the time as usual. Go get the Pirates, see if the Rebels can earn a trip to the semifinals in Indianapolis next week. All right, thanks, John. Hey, Coach Kevin Kruger, our guest. Take a break, come back with more. You're listening to Runner Rebel Warm-Up on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Rainey and Bischoff on the Press Box. Weekday morning starting at 7 on ESPN Las Vegas. 1100 AM and 100.9 FM. KWWN Las Vegas. Premium checking from America First Credit Union is so much more than a regular checking account. It's a saves you money, makes life easier, always has your back account. Because it's absolutely loaded with fantastic benefits and features. In fact, it comes stocked with so much awesome stuff. It was voted best perks by money.com. So make sure you're rocking more than a checking account. Head to America First and apply for the exclusive protection, perks, and paybacks of premium checking today. Subject to membership eligibility and conditions. Federally insured by NCUA. Deep Eddie Vodka, a high-quality vodka with an even higher purpose, to bring people together for good times. We take sunshine, stellar vibes, and laid-back fun and bottle it up for the world to enjoy. The result? A refreshingly clean, real vodka made with real ingredients, ready for you to enjoy however, wherever, and with whomever you like. Vodka is for fun. Please date drink responsibly. Deep Eddie Vodka is a product of Deep Eddie Distiller and Company, Austin, Texas, 40% alcohol by volume, distilled by corn. Guys, basketball's a way of life. A game that puts you to the test. When every play is tip the balance. To win or lose. The teammates depend on you. Well, you got their back. And the score? Well, that's your measure of dedication. We got next. Mini Toyota's got your back. From purchasing your first car to servicing your existing one. We're the team that you want on your side. I'm John Barr, and I'll do anything to sell you a car. Schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Director's Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season. You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Director's Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Director's Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Director's Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Deep Eddie Vodka, a high-quality vodka with an even higher purpose, to bring people together for good times. We take sunshine, stellar vibes, and laid-back fun and bottle it up for the world to enjoy. The result? A refreshingly clean, real vodka made with real ingredients, ready for you to enjoy however, wherever, and with whomever you like. Vodka is for fun. Please date drink responsibly. Deep Eddie Vodka is a product of Deep Eddie Distiller and Company, Austin, Texas, 40% alcohol by volume, distilled by corn. Premium checking from America First Credit Union is so much more than a regular checking account. It's a saves you money, makes life easier, always has your back account. Because it's absolutely loaded with fantastic benefits and features. In fact, it comes stocked with so much awesome stuff. It was voted best perks by money.com. So make sure you're rocking more than a checking account. Head to America First and apply for the exclusive protection, perks, and paybacks of premium checking today. Subject to membership eligibility and conditions. Federally insured by NCUA. Guys, basketball's a way of life. A game that puts you to the test. When every play is tip the balance. To win or lose. The teammates depend on you. Well, you got their back. And the score? Well, that's your measure of dedication. We got next. Mini Toyota's got your back. From purchasing your first car to servicing your existing one. We're the team that you want on your side. I'm John Barr, and I'll do anything to sell you a car. 
It's Chevy truck season, and there's no better time to do what you do best. No better time to get the job done in a Chevy Silverado with best-in-class standard torque and a Turbomax engine with a five-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty that outlasts both Ford and Ram. So kick off whatever your thing is season right, because it all starts with a Chevy truck. See your Southern Nevada Chevy dealers. Based on latest competitive data, excludes other GM vehicles, whichever comes first. See dealer for limited warranty details based on Ford and Ram. Five years, 60,000 mile warranty on gasoline engines. On the Rebel Sports Network from Learfield, running Rebel Basketball is brought to you by Finlay Chevrolet. Finlay Chevrolet is your home of the Woo, located on the 215 Beltway between Rainbow and Jones. South Point, drift away on Cloud 9 as you experience the finest amenities and extraordinary service with South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa. And by Finlay Toyota, celebrating 25 years in Las Vegas, driven to excellence. Running Rebel Basketball is on the air. Here's Curtis Terry and the voice of running Rebel Basketball, John Sandler. We are on the campus of Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey, Walsh Gymnasium. 1,300 seats and they're all full here tonight as the Runner Rebels take on the number one seed in the NIT, the Seton Hall Pirates out of the Big East Conference. Hi, everybody. I'm John Sandler along with Curtis Terry. Great to be with you. Exciting quarterfinal round action here in the NIT. Let's get right to our starting lineups. First of all, for the Pirates, as they come in 22-12 and 12 on the season, 13-7, and 7, fourth place in the Big East. They line up this way. At one guard, it's Al Amir Dawes. Al Dawes, 6'2", senior, from, uh, averaging 14.5 points a game. Dylan Adewusu, Adewusu, a 6'4", senior, averaging 9 points a game. Kadari Richmond, outstanding player, 6'6", six, six, six senior, big guard, and they've got a big backcourt, averaging almost 16 points and 7 rebounds a game. Dre Davis, a 6'6", six, six senior, averaging 15 points a game, and Jaden Bediaco, Bediaco, a 6'10", grad student, averaging 8 points a game. For the Runner Rebels, it is the same starting five we have seen throughout the NIT at the point. Didn't D. Don Thomas Jr., DJ, averaging 14 points a game, and uh, everybody here at Seton Hall talking about how impressed they have been with his performance throughout the year, what they've seen. He's at one guard, Justin Webster, another, the senior in his final year at UNLV. Webster averaging 7.5 points a game. For the Runner Rebels, Shane Noel. Shane been doing a great job in the postseason, averaging over two points a game. Rob Whaley Jr. dealing with that foot and ankle as he has all year long. Whaley averaging seven and a half points a game. And Keelan Boone, Keelan having a brilliant postseason. So good against Boston College. The fifth year senior from Tulsa averaging 13 points a game. Those are our starting lineups. Now let's turn our attention to Curtis's Keys, brought to you by the Southern Nevada Toyota Dealers Association. Well, John, you kind of alluded to it in terms of the backcourt and the size of this Seton Hall Pirates basketball team, and that's where it's going to start for the Rebels. They've got to be able to guard the dribble, keep the ball in front, but also keep it out of the paint. If they allow it to get in the paint, it's going to be a long night, a lot of pressure on that defense and on the rim. The next thing, the Rebels got to be physical. They've got to set the tone and establish their identity. They have to gang rebound. All five guys got to go to the glass. This is a Seton Hall team that averages 37 rebounds per game. We know the numbers when the Rebels rebound well and out-rebound their opponent, things go well. And the last thing and thing, I think, again, the biggest thing for these guys in this group to continue this ride, enjoy the moment. Take advantage of the opportunity. You're on national television. You got a chance to go play for a championship here moving forward in Indianapolis. If you can get this win and go to the semis, it's all about having fun and leaving it on the court. These two teams have met five times before, the Rebels winning three of those. They've met a couple of times in the NCAA tournament. Each time in the regional finals, each team winning one. The Pirates winning uh, in 89 in Denver, and the Runner Rebels winning in Seattle in 1991. Uh, the last time these two teams met was in 1994 here in New Jersey with Seton Hall winning that game. So it's been quite a while since the Runner Rebels and the Pirates have hooked up and uh, the Runner Rebels hoping to continue the winning ways on uh, 
in this series. As I said, they've won three of the five. The uh, winner will play Georgia next week in Indianapolis at historic Hinkle Fieldhouse in the NIT semifinals. And you just get the feeling that the Rebels are kind of riding a, a little bit of a magic carpet ride now. Uh, I don't know that anybody expected them, certainly not the NIT committee, expected them to be making a return trip to New Jersey uh, on this on this uh, Tuesday evening, but or Wednesday evening, pardon me. But uh, the Rudder Rebels uh, surprising them and hoping to uh, pull another surprise tonight against the Pirates. I think you're 100% right. I think the fact that the, that the Rebels got sent to New Jersey uh, a week and a half ago for that first round game, then got sent back to Vegas. They th expected them to get knocked off at least one of those two times, but here the Rebels are, and it is like a magic carpet ride. But these guys are really enjoying each other. They're enjoying the extended opportunity to keep continue playing basketball and working on their skill set, but also building this team and this program. Um, and also for us, it's a lot of fun to be calling it because these guys love the game. They're committed to it. So I know we're enjoying the ride as well. Absolutely. Seton Hall in the home whites trimmed in blue and gray. And the Runner Rebels in the road blacks trimmed in scarlet and gray. Seton Hall taking the floor with uh, Davis, Betiaco, Dawes, Adewusu, and Richmond. And the Rebels counter with Thomas Webster, Noel, Whaley and Keelan Boone and it will be Betiaco and Whaley to take the opening tip and I you know I look out there and the size of the guards with the exception yeah. of Dawes for for Seton Hall is is really something to behold they are yeah. big big kids as you said it's going to be a physical game it's, it's going to be important to make sure like I said guard that guard that drill but also rebound and then kind of see what happens from there all right we're ready to go Betiaco and Whaley for the opening tip Ball is up, and Betiaco wins the tip. Ball in the hands of Kadari Richmond moving from our left to right into the front court. Left side to Adewusu. Out top, Betiaco. Right side, now Dawes. Dawes, top of the key to Richmond. Richmond tries to get the ball inside to Betiaco. It goes off the foot of Keelan Boone, who came out to double him along with Whaley. And it will be Seton Hall basketball as soon as they retrieve it. It's a little bit of a high school gym. The ball goes to the end of the court. They try to throw it back. It goes into the crowd. The crowd throws it back. But a standing room only and uh, enthusiastic crowd, about 1,300 strong. Dawes front court to Richmond. Richmond comes down the left side. Richmond uh, all the way down the left side, pushed off a bit, but puts it off the glass and in. And Seton Hall with the first bucket of the game. DJ heading the other way. Rebels with their first possession. 30 seconds in or so. DJ dribbling out top. DJ across the top of the key to Noel. Shane tries to throw a one-handed pass. It's deflected by Richmond and in the hands of Dawes. Dawes front court shoots a three. It's off the mark. No good. Shane Noel runs down the rebound and gives the ball to DJ Thomas. DJ front court hounded by Dawes. DJ comes left side, bounces the ball to Boone. Keelan drives. Keelan has the ball knocked away. Shane Noel able to run it down. Bounces inside to Whaley. Whaley puts it up a little too strong. And the rebound to Richmond. Richmond into the front court. Richmond thinks about a three. Reverses the ball left side to Davis. Davis drives. Davis to Betiaco. Betiaco lays it in. So a couple of relatively easy buckets for Seton Hall. They lead 4 nothing. a minute and a half in. Now, like we talked about, the Rebels have to keep the ball out of the paint. That's going to be the important thing. Now DJ lost the ball. It goes to Richmond. Richmond in the lane and a blocking foul on Shane Noel. DJ had the ball kind of take a funny bounce out of his hands and up in the air and that'll bring Caleb Boone into the ball game. First foul. Noel going to the bench. Caleb Boone check again. And it will be Seton Hall basketball. 18-27 to go, 4 nothing. Pirates with the early lead. Richmond inbound. Richmond left side to Dawes. Dawes brings it back out top and gives the ball to Adewusu. Right side, Davis. Davis puts it on the floor, driving on Whaley. Steps through on Rob, lays it up, and goaltending is going to be the call on Caleb Boone. And it's 6 nothing. and Seton Hall able to get the ball inside driving from the angles. And like we talked about, that was the first key of the game. You've got to guard the dribble, keep it in front. You've got to keep it out of the paint. That's what's going to be the key defensively for the Rebels. Now offensively, you've got to try to find some rhythm, get the ball swung. All right, ball right side in the hands of Justin Webster. 
Watch by Adewusu. Out top to DJ. DJ in the lane. DJ little floater rolls in. So Thomas takes the lid off the basket for the Rebels. Two minutes in, 6-2 in favor of Seton Hall. In the front court, Davis with the ball out top. Left side, Adewusu. Adewusu looks like a fullback out there. Yeah. Richmond right side to a cutter who got away. Daw has got away from DJ. No help underneath. He lays it in. Seton Hall with four layups. Yeah, and, and right there, that's just that's a very easy elementary UCLA cut that they just ran there. The Rebels got to make sure they jump to the ball, but then the big has to sag, and you have to have weak side help. All right, DJ front court directing traffic. They bounce it down low to Caleb Boone, his first touch. Caleb on the left block, backing in. Caleb tries to spin toward the basket. Stuck in the lane, gives the ball out to DJ on the left side. And DJ tries to throw it back to Caleb. He wasn't ready because he was being held. And the ball goes out of bounds. So the second turnover by the Rebels. Actually, third turnover by the Rebels. 17-10 to go. 8-2 Seton Hall. Richmond out top. Richmond. Throws the ball left side to Davis. Davis, a three from that left side is short. Long rebound to DJ, and DJ into the front court. Nice bounce pass ahead to Justin Webster. Webster has his shot rejected. DJ runs it down in the left corner. DJ tries to get it into Whaley. He can't handle it. DJ gets it back and then gets run over by Dawes, and that's the first whistle against Seton Hall. 16.48 to go in the first half. 8-2. The Hall with the lead, as they are referred to locally. And that, that last possession defensively for the Rebels, that's more of like what you want to see. You've got to be sure you're touching cutters, you're bumping cutters, and you want to shoot this team, force this team to shoot. As a team, they only shoot 32% from three. That's where they're going to struggle. DJ having trouble getting it in, finally bounces it inside to uh, Caleb Boone, and they say it went off Caleb. Caleb saying it went off Betty Yako's leg. But uh, the officials say no, it went off Caleb, so another turnover. The Rebels out of sync to start this game. 16.40 to go. 8-2 Seton Hall. Dawes bounces left side Richmond. Richmond now comes into the lane. Bounces right side Ade Wosu. Shoots a three. No good. Rebound Caleb Boone. And they get the ball to DJ. DJ in the front court right side. DJ down the right side. Curls back out top. DJ cross court to Webster. Left corner to Boone. Boone a three from that left corner. Back iron no good. Keelan's first three attempt is a little bit long. Dawes Tries to bounce it ahead to Betiaco. He does. Betiaco puts it up and in and a foul. So a chance for a three-point play. Nice pass by Dawes, bouncing it through to the cutting Betiaco. And on a missed three-pointer from the corner, that's not a long rebound. The Rebels have to get back to transition defense. That wasn't even a fast break. It was almost like a slow secondary break. Uh, and, and the Rebels let the big man, Betiaco, beat them down the floor. The Rebels got to load up to the ball and protect the paint again. So 10-2 Seton Hall, 16.09 to go. And Betiaco at the line, a chance for a three-point play. And nothing easy thus far on the offensive end for the Rebels. Betiaco's free throw is good. 11-2, all, well, all five field goals for Seton Hall right at the rim. In the front court, Boone with the ball left side. Has it knocked away from behind. And it'll be Rebel ball out of bounds, 16.02 to go. 11-2 Seton Hall, the only Rebel bucket, a little runner by DJ. Ball into Caleb on the left side. Caleb hands back to DJ. DJ creates a little space in the corner. Now brings it back out top. Timeout at the next whistle. Ball to Justin Webster, down low to Whaley. Whaley cross court to DJ. DJ, down low to Boone. Boone on the left block. Boone backing in. Boone still backing in. Turns, a little jump hook is good. Nice shot, Caleb Boone. 11-4. 15 and a half to go. Dawes bounces to Richardson. Almost stolen by Keelan Boone, or a chance to. Adewusu has the ball knocked away, goes and gets it in the backcourt. Adewusu tries to come left. Nice pass underneath to Betiaco. As Caleb Boone went out to hedge, nobody came over to help on the big man. Yeah, and you, you've got two guys on that weak side opposite the ball where it came from. You've got to make sure that you're loading up and protecting the ball basket. Now DJ drives, has his shot deflected by Betiaku after Betiaku's dunk the other way. It's 13-4. to four. Davis with the ball out top for Seton Hall. Gives the ball to Richmond. Under 15 to go. Richmond going to back in on DJ Thomas. Richmond throws it out to Davis. Davis open for a three straight away. No good. 
Seton Hall unable to knock down a long shot. Keelan Boone bounces left side to Webster. Webster's three is short. And the rebound knocked out of bounds by a couple of Seton Hall players. First break, really, the Rebels have gotten in the game. 14.38 to go in the first half. Seton Hall off to a very good start, leading 13-4. to You're listening to Runner Rebel Basketball, the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. It's not about, it's not about, it's not about the injury. If you've been in an accident due to someone else's negligence, remember, it's not about the injury, it's about the recovery. Hi, this is Paul Pata from Paul Pata Law. At Paul Pata Law, we handle all types of cases, whether you've been injured in a car accident, a motorcycle accident, or an accident on a commercial premises. You can find us on Facebook or at paulpatalaw.com. Remember, it's not about the injury, it's about the recovery. Friendly Ford says yes to Truck Month. Yes! Nevada's truck headquarters for 54 years. Friendly has it all. Gas, hybrids, electrics. Drive how you want to drive. Yes! New 2023 F-150 trucks. 1.9% financing plus $1,500 factory cash. And all F-150s now come with a six-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. Friendly Ford. Easy to get to on North Decatur just off the U.S. 95. Always see through Ford Credit. See Friendly for details. 1.9% for 36 months. 372 Hey fans, remember that Finley Chevrolet located in the southwest at 215 in South Rainbow. They're Nevada's number one Chevrolet volume dealership, and frankly, they're customer driven. And Parkway Tavern is the official partner of UNLV Athletics and your official home of the Rebels on the Road. John and Curtis with you here at Walsh Gym on the campus of Seton Hall University. Rebels off to a rough start. Four turnovers in the basketball game. And just two of seven shooting. Meanwhile, Seton Hall, six of ten. And uh, all six of those field goals coming from very close range. Yeah, and it's almost blown coverage is what the Rebels are allowed so far with these baskets that have been in the paint. Uh, Weak side help, just not engaged. Standing on the weak side and watching. You've got to make sure that you're locked in. And these are things that the Rebels went through uh, yesterday in practice. They talked about again today during film and their walkthrough. But they've just got to be, again, be more conscious, conscientious of what's going on and make sure that you're engaged and not just standing and watching. Because, again, with this as such a big team, you've got to make sure you're down and sliding your feet. But you've got to make sure that when they pick and roll, you're loading up on the weak side because you're trying to hard hedge to protect that drive. Because if you don't, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. All right, the Rebels go to the bench and bring Jackie Johnson into the game, replacing Justin Webster. But you're right, it, Curtis, it's, it's been the lack of help uh, when the Rebels either switch or hedge, as you mentioned. Yeah, and they've done a great job on the ball, and they've even handled the pick and roll with the ball handler very well. They've hedged, long hedge, made him go high and wide around that, uh, that that screener. But again, on that roll guy, that weak side's not there. On the UCLA cut, that weak side guy's not there. So that's where they've got to get better. And this is typically a team that does a very good job in help side and weak side and off-ball defense. Right now, they're just a step late, and it's, it's costing them. I mean, 12 points in the paint as of right now. Well, you're a step late against a team the caliber of Seton Hall with their experience right. and their size. You it's going to cost you. You don't have the benefit or the luxury of being a step late in this game, yeah. um, and, and they've seen that so far. All right, it will be run a Rebel basketball. They're down 13-4, to 14-38 to go in the first half. And Seton Hall stays with the same group. They don't sub much, and they actually oh. have two players who play some uh, are, are out for tonight's game. Yeah. So and their bench is even shorter. And that's one thing the Rebels need to try to take advantage of. Try to get some guys in foul trouble, try to push and attack these guys in transition when you get the opportunity because, again, they've got a short bench, so you've got to try to find an advantage somewhere. But if you're going to cast long shots and turn the ball over, that's going to make it easy on Seton Hall. All right. Ball comes in to Caleb Boone in the left corner. Caleb hands the ball to Webster. Webster curls. Webster in the lane. Fall away 14-footer. Nice shot, Jay Webb. 13-6. With 14.25 to go. Kadari Richardson bringing the ball into the front court. Out top to Betty Yako. Over to Dewusu. Top of the key, Davis. Davis, right side, Richardson. Back out, Betty Yako. Betty Yako hands to Dawes. Dawes dribbles down the left side. Dawes cross court pass to Dewusu on the wing. Shoots a three. A tough guarded three. Rebound tipped by Jackie Johnson and taken by Keelan Boone. Jackie gets the ball back, gives the ball to. DJ, DJ drives left side. DJ gets banged by Betty Yako. No call. Caleb Boone with a rebound, and he gets fouled. 
DJ got hammered by Badiaku with the body. The unfortunate thing is that we're used to him not getting foul calls and what's gone through the course of the Mountain West Conference season. I think the other thing that's going to that's gonna hurt these guys is that you're playing back east with refs that are typically from back east, and you're going to see that they officiate games differently than what you've seen on the course of the season. So Caleb at the line shooting two. The foul on Bediaku is first, and the second on Seton Hall. 13-6 as Caleb misses the free throw in and out. No good. Brooklyn Hicks checks in. And Webb to the bench. So it was uh, Jackie coming in for Rob Whaley yeah. earlier. Rebels on the floor now. The Boons, Jackie, Hicks, and DJ Thomas. Second free throw is also no good. So Caleb misses both free throws, and that's unusual for him. He's a very good free throw shooter on the year. Richardson front court remains 13 to 6 with 13.45 to go. Dawes catches, shoots a 14 foot jumper coming off a pick at the foul line and knocks it down. Quickly, the Rebels the other way. Jackie Johnson, front court, left side. Out top to DJ Thomas. DJ, left side, Jackie. He'll launch a three. It's off the back iron, no good. Had a wide open look. Yeah. Looked like Seton Hall had gone to a 2-3 zone for the first time. Dawes at the elbow, got inside, misses the shot, however. Keelan rebounds and heads up the floor. Keelan, front court, right side to Jackie Johnson. Jackie puts it on the floor. Jackie has it knocked away, but a foul on Davis reaching in. 13-13 to go, 15-6, as Justin Webster will check back in, and DJ will go to the bench for the first time, get a little rest before the media timeout. Third team foul on the Pirates. Webster inbound, and Jaquan Sanders enters for Seton Hall, their first bench player to come into the game. Ball out top. Caleb Boone able to save it after it was tipped. Caleb gives the ball to Webster out top to Jackie Johnson. Jackie bounces to Boone. Boone at the elbow on the right side. Boone hands the ball to Jackie. Jackie going to drive. Bounces to Webster. Webster a three from out there. Front iron no good. And the rebound knocked away by Brooklyn Hicks away from Bediaco. But uh, the foul going to be called on Caleb Boone grabbing Bediaco from behind. That's his second, and he'll come to the bench. And the Rebels are going to have a very small margin of error and, and just windows of opportunity. There was a time on that, the possession, two pos or the beginning of this possession, coming back in transition, where Jackie missed Caleb on the inside, small window. You've got to be able to see these plays and deliver them. But again, you can't turn the ball over. You can't afford loose ball fouls. 12.45 to go, 15-6. to six. Seton Hall with the lead. Ball to Davis, goes baseline on Ke Keelan Boone, and Keelan called for a foul. His first, that is the fourth on the Rebels. And with 12.41 to go, Richardson to trigger inbound baseline left side for the Pirates. Throws it out top to Davis. Davis gives the ball to Dawes, down low to Richardson. Brooklyn Hicks trying to guard him. Richardson goes baseline, puts it up no good. Rebound controlled by Keelan Boone. Keelan heads quickly up the floor. Keelan going to shoot a three. Keelan's three is an air ball. Wow. Rebels really out of sync. Dawes down the right side. Dawes almost lost the dribble, puts it up short. Keelan with a great rebound. Gives the ball to Hicks. Hicks flying in the front court. Hicks down the lane. Hicks reverse layup. Nice move to get away from Richardson and lay it in. And the Rebels need to have some transition points, some transition opportunities. And it's a great job. Great job there by Brooklyn to bust that thing out of the backcourt and attack the basket. Hicks with his shoe untied, shoves his laces in just into his shoe as Richardson has the ball out top. Rob Whaley has checked back in. Pass underneath. Bediaco had a great play by Jackie Johnson to come steal the ball from Bediaco on the baseline. But unfortunately, Jackie's foot grazed the baseline as he grabbed the basketball. And so it will be Seton Hall basketball when we come back. 11.51 to go in the first half. Seton Hall 15, Runner Rebels 8. You're listening to Runner Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Not to brag, but Progressive's Name Your Price tool is mankind's greatest tool ever. Even better than the wheel. Sure, without the wheel, we wouldn't have modern transportation or funny videos of dogs riding skateboards. But without the Name Your Price tool, we wouldn't have easy access to auto insurance options based on our budget. And, well, cars do need wheels. They also need insurance. And insurance never goes flat. Learn more about the greatest tool ever. The Name Your Price tool at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. 
Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. This is UNLV running Rebel Basketball. Now back to John Sandler. Hey, fans, Seat Geek, the official fan-to-fan ticket marketplace of UNLV Athletics. Whether you're buying or selling basketball tickets, Seat Geek is the place to do it. Seat Geek, so Rebel fans can fan. John and Curtis with you here in uh, South Orange, New Jersey, campus of uh, Seton Hall University. Runner Rebels struggling offensively primarily just to get open looks. Rebels are 4 of 13 from the field, 0 of 5 from 3 to start this game with 11.51 to go in the first half. They trail 15 to 8. Foul trouble with uh, Caleb Boone on the bench with 2. And just trying to get enough separation to get a decent look at the basket. Yeah, and they're going to have to work to compete. We, we talked about this. We highlighted it at the pregame show and the top of the top of the game broadcast. But this is a very physical team. They've got big guards, big wings, uh, and they want to put their body on you. They want to push you around. And, again, in the Big East and just back East in general, that type of basketball is, is it's how it's played. It's almost like in football, the West Coast offense, right? More free-flowing. This is like grind hard-nosed football here in terms of how they play basketball back east. So the Rebels got to adjust to that, and I think they've done so here over the last couple minutes, at least from the last media timeout. And defensively, they're getting more engaged. Jackie Johnson coming across and stealing that ball but stepping out of bounds, that's being engaged on that weak side because if you're not there, that's a slam dunk for Betty Yako. But offensively, like you mentioned, they've got to be able to get some separation, hold your screens a little bit longer, be strong and rip through the ball. But so far, they've had, they've had success in this game like they have on the season, getting to the paint and being able to finish. All right, the Rebels break the huddle. Shane Noel back into the ball game. It'll be Seton Hall ball. There's 14 on the shot clock. The Rebels on the floor right now with uh, Webster, Hicks, Jackie Johnson, Shane Noel, and Rob Whaley. So the biggest guy on the floor for the run Rebels right now is is uh, 6'6". Against uh, a Seton Hall team that has a point guard who's 6'6". Right. Again, again you, you've got to... Got to go in there and fight with what you've got, but the Rebels got to now, they've got to do their work even more so on that weak side, helping each other five-man defense, but also five-man rebounding. Sadrake Nganga has checked in the ball game. Another big for Seton Hall. It'll be a Dewusu to take the ball out, baseline right side. A Dewusu to Dawes on the right wing. From the corner, he shoots a three. It's short, and the rebound to Noel. So neither team able to find the range. They've combined to go 0 for 11 from 3. Brooklyn Hicks drives and throws the ball away. Just a, a, a poor play by Brooklyn. Dawes ahead of the pack, able to lay it in on a really nice length of the court bounce pass from uh, from a day Wusu. And it's 17 to 8. And I don't know what Brooklyn uh, was trying to do there. As uh, Jackie Johnson with the basketball. Jackie steps inside, puts up a floater. Long, no good. Whaley with the rebound. Whaley catches. Whaley steps inside, gets fouled, and he'll go to the line and shoot two. Nice fight by Rob down low. Yeah, and that's what the Rebels are going to have to do. They're going to have to find ways to get second chance opportunities. And we just gave, we highlighted and gave Brooklyn credit for, for the fast break opportunity that he got and scored on the reverse layup. That's great. You can push it. You can attack. But you don't have to force it if you don't have it. And you definitely don't want to leave your feet. You'd rather back that out and maintain that offensive possession because, again, you're struggling right now to score as a group. All right. Whaley at the line shooting two. First free throw is no good. Foul was on uh, Ngaga. DJ back in the ball game, and Hicks goes to the bench. Rob makes the second, 17 to 9, with 11:15 to go. And a Day Wusu bringing the ball up, picked up at midcourt by Justin Webster. A Day Wusu comes left side, hands to Dawes, Dawes across the middle of the floor to Sanders. Sanders gives the ball to Davis. Davis drives on Noel. Davis flips it underneath to Nganga, who lays it in. Nice interior pass. Shane Noel got stuck behind Nganga there. 19-9. to 
DJ right side to Webster in the corner, Jackie Johnson. Jackie drives. Jackie out to Noel. They work the ball right side to Justin Webster. Shoots a three short. Davis with the rebound. In the front court, Davis to Dawes. Dawes gets past Webster, throws a pass in the corner. They work it out to a Dewusu. He drives. Dewusu shot blocked from behind by Rob Whaley. Swatted out of bounds. And that last possession offensively was great for the Rebels. You attack, you get a paint touch, you get a kick weak side and two swings. And that's just a shot that Justin Webster's been making as of late. But they're going to have to knock down those opportunities to maintain contact with this game. Yeah. Neither team, uh, teams have combined to go for 12 now from three. All right, Richmond back in the game, the starting point guard. Inbounding baseline right side to Sanders. Sanders baseline jumper, no good. Rebound Shane Noel. 10-20 to go. 19-9 Seton Hall. DJ Thomas front court. DJ drives. DJ down the left side. DJ puts it up and in. Nice move, DJ Thomas there. Yeah, yeah, that kid, he's spectacular. I mean, even being for a freshman, he's got a way to be able to create separation and lose his defender. And a great job right there getting the paint to finish. 19-11, to 11, midway through the first half. Richmond comes right side this time. Richmond, cross-court pass to Nganga, who was heading to the basket. Richmond saying, why were you doing that? As the ball sailed through his hands out of bounds. Rebels get a turnover. Keelan Boone checks back in for the Rebels. Jackie goes to the bench. And it's uh, a six-point Seton Hall lead with 9.45 to go. Oh, pardon me, eight-point lead, pardon me. As D.J. Thomas takes the ball left side to Webster. Webster drives, Webster in the lane. One-handed floater is good, and a foul. Chance for a three-point play to Justin. Now it's a six-point lead. I was just predicting the future. Foreshadowing. <laughs> I get it, I get it. But again, great job first by D.J. to attack. Kick to Justin, and a quick curl off that kind of rub screen that D.J. set, getting into the paint, finishing, and having a chance for that old-fashioned three-point play again. The Rebels are having success when they get paint touches like Coach Kevin Kruger and his staff have been preaching all season long. The difference is that the post-up paint touches have not been working. No, it's been uh, the driving by the guards. Webster's free throw is good. 19-14. to 14. So the Rebels on a bit of a run right now. They've scored five straight points with under nine and a half to go. Richmond gives the ball to Davis. Now Dawes back to Richmond out top left side double team. Cross court pass to Ade Wusu. He shoots a three and finally someone made one. Ade Wusu knocks down a three. 22-14. DJ drives again. DJ, a one-handed floater is blocked from behind by Richmond. Came flying from behind to get a finger on it and he heads the other way. Richmond pushes off, gets away with it and feeds Davis underneath for a layup. Richmond clearly pushed off there. And the official standing right there let him get away with it. 24-14. So 4 nothing run for Seton Hall. Or check that, 5 nothing after the Rebels had gone on a run of their own. Justin Webster, out top left side in the corner to DJ. Down low to Whaley. Whaley steps through, bangs his way in, and lays it in. Nice job by Rob Whaley against a much bigger player, and, and there aren't many. No, no, there's not many guys that are going to be much bigger and stronger than Rob Whaley, but they've definitely got some size and some strength on this Seton Hall team. Betty Yaku is huge. He's got the basketball. 24-16. Davis straight away for a three is no good. Whaley with the rebound. Feeds DJ. 8-10 to go. Rebels with the ball. DJ comes left side. DJ working left side. Left wing to Keelan Boone. Down low to Whaley on the baseline. Whaley turns to face Betayaku. Backing in. Rob turns on the baseline and lays it in. Great move spinning on the baseline there. And as big as Betayaku is, Rob is just as big, but he's got better feet. Better post work, especially on the inside. 24-18. 7.40 to go. Timeout at the next whistle. Richmond. To Dewusu. Out top, Betayaku. Betayaku is going to hand it Dawes. He's back in the game. Dawes at the elbow. 15-foot jumper. In and out. No good. Keelan Boone with the rebound. Keelan, cross-court right side to DJ. Middle of the floor, back to Boone. Boone, hands to Webster. Webster, long three. In and out, no good. Rebound to Dawes. It's a quick one there, but again, I think that was a good shot. You get a chance to transition to get a clean look. That's one Justin's been knocking down. Dawes out top to Davis, right side Richmond. Richmond fakes the three. Comes right side, flips it back to Davis. Davis tries a three. That's no good. Long rebound, however, taken by Richmond over Shane Noel. 
Now a pass underneath to Adewusu. Missed the layup. DJ front, into the front court. Dribbling through traffic. DJ comes in the lane. DJ left side to Keelan Boone. He'll stroke a three. That's an air ball. Second air ball by Keelan in the game. And that'll be our media timeout. 6.48 to go. In the first half, 24-18 Rebels trail. You're listening to Runner Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Sales are great. Great chance to save money on something you need. But there's something better, a closeout. Why? Because with a closeout, we have to clear out the current models to make room for the new ones. And if it's got to go, it's got to be low. Hi, I'm Dave Mizrahi, owner of Best Mattress. And right now, we've got, you guessed it, a closeout. Save 50% on select Temper Adapt Collection mattresses. 50% on maybe the best mattress on earth. Plus, you've got easy financing, too. Best Mattress. Sleep easy, friends. At Berg Simpson, our team's tireless dedication sets us apart. With every client and every case, we prepare to go to trial. We're proud of the success, verdicts, and settlements we've gotten. And we'll continue to go the extra mile to get our clients the best possible outcome. Let Berg Simpson's team of experienced personal injury lawyers fight to get you the money you need and deserve. If you've been injured in an accident, call Berg Simpson for free now at 702-621-7777. BergSimpson.com. Good lawyers changing lives. It's not just a slogan. It's who we are. Hey, fans. Desert Radiology, the premier radiology practice in Nevada, providing the highest quality of diagnostic and interventional imaging. For over 50 years, radiology provider and partner of the Valley Health System Hospitals, UMC, and Southwest Medical Associates, and the trusted community partner of just about every sports franchise in the Valley. Official partner of UNLV Athletics and 11 convenient full-service imaging facilities in Las Vegas, Henderson, and Pahrump. We're in New Jersey, South Orange. There's East Orange, there's South Orange. I think there's West Orange. I don't know if there's a North Orange. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. They're all, it's all apples to oranges at the end of the day. Wow. Wow. Yep. 24-18. John and Shecky Green with you. 6.48 to go in the first half. Rebels trail by six and uh, maybe a little bit fortunate to be down only six at this point. Very much so. Especially with... With some of the looks that Seton Hall has had from the perimeter, only one of nine for three. Uh, and on the other side for the Rebels, 0 of eight. They've got to be able to knock down some shots. Obviously a slow start here for Keelan Boone, who's been just nothing but outstanding offensive for the Rebels um, so far in this postseason and in March alone. Uh, but the Rebels got to find something that's going to work offensively. Getting to the basket seems to be going well. The one thing I do fear is that the last couple possessions, especially Kadari Richmond, uh, Richard, Richmond, what you're seeing is these guys are New York City basketball players, right? So you're starting to see a little playground from them, little crossovers, some no looks. When they start, when people start playing like that, that means they're really, really comfortable, and you don't want them to get that level of swagger because things can snowball very quickly. But the Rebels got to make sure they stay down. Again, force these guys to shoot, but try not to get caught up in too much of that hot sauce basketball. All right, Carl Jones makes his first appearance in the ball game as Whaley goes back to the bench. Rob had some terrific plays over the last few minutes. Brooklyn Hicks also re-enters the game. Meanwhile, Seton Hall has its starting five back on the floor. And it will be their basketball with 6.48 to go, and they lead 24-18. to All right, Richmond with the basketball quickly in the front court to Dawes. Way out top, Davis. Left side of Dewusu, back to Richmond. Richmond brings the ball to the elbow on the right side, bounces down low to Bediaco. Bediaco traveled. Oh. Carl Jones hustling back to, to get behind him, and Bediaco, I don't know if Carl pulled the, pulled the chair there or not, but Bediaco looked for contact. It wasn't there. Bediaco started dancing, and I didn't hear any music. <laughs> DJ with the ball out top. DJ comes left side. DJ, cross-court pass out top to Keelan Boone. Keelan, going to drive. Keelan in the lane. Keelan puts up a very tough shot. Got himself up in the air and really had nowhere to go with it. Ade Wusu front court to Richmond. Richmond watched by Shane Noel. Richmond back to the basket. Richmond into the lane now. Richmond going to shoot a fall away over Shane and it rolls in. 26-18. DJ into the front court. 
DJ out to Noel. Chain left side to Keelan. Keelan directing traffic back to DJ. DJ spins. Comes to the elbow out to Keelan Boone. Thinks about the three. Comes down the left side. Keelan in the lane. Keelan tough fall away jumper. Rolls out. Shane Noel went flying in for the rebound and gets called for a foul. Now, with that possession, there's two good things. That's a much better shot that we'd rather see Keelan make. Get to the basket, use your size, shoot that little mid, mid-paint fadeaway. And then on that offensive board, we want to see Shane Noel go to the glass. Now, was that over the back? They called it. Could be questionable, but that's the aggression we need to see out of him and his teammates trying to get those second-chance opportunities. 26-18 Seton Hall with 5.35 to go. And Richmond into the front court. Richmond comes left side. Backing in on Keelan Boone. Cross-court pass to Davis. Davis, as Rob Whaley fell down, lays it up on the baseline, put his arm right on Rob, but I think Rob was already falling down. And that's why there was no offensive foul call. 28-18, 5.15 to go. Thomas to Keelan Boone. Keelan hands the ball to Brooklyn Hicks. Hicks brings it back out top. Over to DJ. DJ, down low to Whaley. Whaley, going to on the left wing, backing in on a Dewusu, steps into the lane, has yeah. the ball knocked away, but a foul. Foul on a Dewusu. First on him. Caleb will check back into the ball game. He's got two personal fouls, keep in mind. 5-0-1 to go. 28-18. Seton Hall with the lead. That is the sixth foul on Seton Hall. So the Rebels would be shooting free throws from here. DJ to inbound baseline left side. DJ doesn't throw the ball to Keelan. Now he does. And Richmond just reaches over the top and flicks it away. And DJ now inbounding in the corner. That's a tougher inbound. Gets it into Hicks. Out top to Boone. Boone going to shoot a long straightaway three. It's short. Brooklyn Hicks inside for the rebound. Missed Whoa. it, but Caleb Boone for the slam dunk. Oh, boy. Big time put back there by Caleb Boone. 28-20. 4.40 to go. Dawes dribbling out top. Dawes almost has it taken away by DJ. Dawes going to come left side now. Almost lost it again. Over to Ade Wusu, right side. Davis inside Bediaco. Bediaco reverse layup. Oh. Lost it. Gets it back Traveling. and traveled. Ball was knocked away. Deflected by Caleb, I believe. And then Keelan came in to help. And another travel call. And again, the Rebels are doing much better defensively than that first five-minute stretch of the game. They're being more engaged. They're within touch um, of the weak side, but also on the strong side. They're disrupting right now. And you're starting to see Seton Hall stand a little bit and unsure of how to attack and where they're going to get their opportunities. David Tubek has checked into the game first time. For Betty Ako as he goes to the bench. 28-20, 4.15 to go. Elon Boone out top to Rob Whaley. Now to Justin Webster. Webster backs away from Ade Wusu to DJ middle of the floor. DJ comes right side, bounces to Justin. Justin in the lane. Justin, 14-foot, tough jumper. No good. Rebound to Richmond. He gives it to Dawes. Dawes up ahead to Tubek. Tubek almost lost it out of bounds. Throws it out to Dawes. Right corner of Day Wusu, underneath to Tubek. Tubek to a cutter, Richmond inside, and he lays it in. The Rebels almost had a couple of steals, but uh, unable to collect the ball. 30 to 20. DJ out top right side. DJ picks up the dribble, down low to Whaley on the right side. Whaley spins, has Keelan Boone all alone, instead Whoa. throws it away. I don't know what Rob was doing there. Keelan Boone all alone on Rob's side of the floor. It was an easy pass. He didn't see him, and Dawes makes him pay the other way with a three. And I'm not, I'm not sure what Rob was seeing or not seeing there, but he had he had Keelan Boone standing six feet from him wide open. Yeah, you can't, you can't get locked in and go tunnel vision and not see the whole floor. Easy read there, just had his head down, and he clearly was locked in on trying to score or trying to make something else happen that wasn't there. Well, timeout called by the Rebels as they now trail 33-20. to 20. Kevin Kruger knowing that the game getting away a little bit from his team. They wanted to settle him down, and that'll be our media timeout. 3.22 to go in the first half. 33-20, Seton Hall with the lead. You're listening to Runner Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. 
When fires, burst pipes, mold, or extreme weather impact your home or business, Belfour Property Restoration has your back. No matter the property damage emergency, Belfour is ready to respond. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year to clean up the damage and restore your property so you can start rebuilding faster. Belfour Property Restoration, restoring more than property. To find your local Belfour office, visit www.belfor.com. That's www.belfor.com to learn more eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Now back to Runnin' Rebels Basketball. Here's Curtis Terry and the voice of Runnin' Rebel Basketball, John Sandler. Hey fans, get off the sidelines into EOS Fitness, proud partner of UNLV. Featuring premium amenities including their turf functional training area, move EOS Cinema, they're open 24-7 and much more. Join for as low as $9.99 a month at joineos.com. EOS Fitness, better gym, better price. John and Curtis with you here in uh, New Jersey. Walsh Gymnasium, tiny little gym, 1,300 fans mostly standing and enjoying themselves because Seton Hall kind of taking it to the Rebels right now, 33-20. to 20. Rebels just look out of sync on the offensive end. Uh, and, and not to pick on Rob because he's, he's been so brilliant. And actually, it was Rob Whaley's emergence that was one of the absolute turning points in this season yeah. uh, for the runner Rebels. But uh, as you said, he just got locked in on that last sequence. And I'm wondering if the ball got knocked out of his hands because it went straight to a seat and all player. That, that could be, but even even with that said, that ball should have been passed to Keelan Boone, I mean, three dribbles before that. Yeah. And so, again, it's a matter of make sure you're trusting your teammates. We've got to see the floor. And like I mentioned before the break, you can't get tunnel vision. You can't predetermine what you want to do or what's going to happen on the floor. You've got to take what the defense gives you. And in that case, they got lost. Uh, the, the guy that was guarding Keelan Boone sagged and showed too much help. And that's where you've got to, you've got to acknowledge that. You've got to see that. Because you need Keelan Boone to get going. And that would have been the most open shot he's had so far on the night. Yeah. All right. So the Rebels missed that chance. But uh, we'll see if they can get it done with this possession. Trailing 33-20 with 3.22 to go. And these, these next 322 is going to be big for the Rebels. Right now, obviously a 13-point lead. Uh, Seton Hall is in the middle of a 5-0 run. You, you've got to make sure that you keep you keep contact. You can't have too much separation going into halftime and let this team get more confidence and let this crowd get more excited at the end of the game. The Rebels have to answer here and try to close this gap as much as possible. This Red and Rebel team, as we've mentioned, has been so good on the road this year. Wins at Boise. Win it at the pit. Uh, doing a great job in Mountain West Conference. Play six road wins. And then winning at Princeton last time out. Right, Rebels with the ball. DJ Thomas gets it from Keelan Boone. DJ out top right side. DJ middle of the floor. Comes down the lane. DJ throws a lob underneath to Caleb. Caleb catches and slam dunks it. That easy. And that's one thing that's going to work. Again, you might have to keep the ball in DJ's hands a little bit more. Make him create a lot of more opportunities. But if paint touches, that's the name of the game for the Rebels. 2.50 to go. 33-22. Richardson. At the elbow on the right side, Richardson shoots over Keelan Boone and just knocks it down. Just a, that's just a tough bucket. If he's going to make those, so be it. Keelan in the front court on the left wing, backing in on Richardson. Keelan in the lane. Keelan stops. His fall away jumper is good. Got hit on the arm. Official says, I don't care. <laughs> 35-24 with 2.25 to go. Richardson working on Boone. Dribbling out top, backs away. Richardson has this demeanor where he looks so disinterested oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden explodes to the basket like that <laughs> and lays it in with the left that, hand. That's that New York City point guard. I mean, this is a guy that's from Brooklyn, New York. A lot of great point guards and players have came from Brooklyn, uh, but he, he's just kind of got that swagger to where he's just relaxed, lackadaisical, but he's going to get by you and be able to finish in a number of different ways. Ball to Whaley on the left baseline. Whaley double clutch shot, no good. Gets his own rebound, puts it up, and gets fouled. So Rob battling underneath. 37-24 with a minute 54 to go. That'll bring Betiaco back in the ballgame. 
Seton Hall coached by uh, Sheen Holloway, who was uh, rather vocal with his displeasure with the committee. Oh, yeah. Leaving the Pirates. I, I, and you know what? I fully agree with it. And, and rightfully so. I mean, you're, you're talking about a team here that, that finished fourth in the Big East. Um, 13 and 7. 13 and 7 in the Big East, finished fourth, fourth place. Um, and they, I mean, they had a really good season, but they also beat. UConn by 15, they beat Marquette by 3, they lost to Creighton by 3 in double overtime, and you're talking about, again, teams that are in the top 10 in the country. Yeah. Yep. If you can go do that to a team that's in the top 10 in the country and the number one team overall, which was UConn, you probably got it, you, you probably got some standing in terms of your argument to be in the tournament. I think Shaheen Holloway has the biggest bone to pick out of anybody that's making a complaint. No doubt. All right, Whaley knocks down both free throws, and it's 37-26. Richardson in the front court. Rebels go 2-3 zone for the first time. Betty Yako on the right block. Out to Richmond. Over to Dewasu. Out to Richmond. Richmond will shoot a three. And he hit it. He's gotten hot. And uh, that has become a problem. Minute and a half to go. 40-26. to DJ to Keelan Boone. Keelan comes left side. Working on Davis, who's bigger. Keelan backing in. Going to shoot a fall away jumper. Boy, that is a tough shot. We've seen him make it, but he missed that one. Richardson with a rebound with a minute 10 to go. Davis front court. Davis in the lane, backing in on Keelan. He'll step back and shoot a fall away, and he'll hit it. Minute to go, 42-26, biggest lead of the game for Seton Hall. Keelan out top left side. Keelan gives the ball to Rob Whaley at the elbow on the left side. Rob way out to Justin Webster. Webster to DJ. DJ middle of the floor. DJ comes down the left side. DJ has the ball knocked away and stolen. Dawes down the right side. Dawes underneath. Dawes lays it up. Got pushed. No call. A day Wusu with the rebound. Keelan got away with a foul there. And now a tie up. DJ Thomas ties up a day Wusu. And the Rebels have the ball with 31.6 to go. <laughs> Keelan Boone got away with an absolute shove yeah. on Dawes. Nice body check there. They didn't call it. <laughs> Rebels got to get a basket here. The last possession of the half, they've got to make sure they get a basket going in the half. DJ will hold for the last shot. About a one-second difference. Shot clock and game clock. 42-26, Seton Hall. DJ just out near the 10-second line. 15-14-13. Whaley comes to set a pick. DJ dribbles across right side. DJ back left now. DJ reverses to Webster. Stolen by Adewusu. And a dunk will end the first half, and that's the way the half has gone. And uh, DJ telegraphed that pass. It was way too easy to see. And the Rebels are down by 18 points at halftime, 44-26, as Seton Hall has done whatever they've wanted. Yeah, and we talked about it. I mean, that was that run that they went on here. Um, and it, 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 to, to finish this half, and the Rebels, again, taking some bad shots, taking some tough shots. But ultimately, it's been turnovers and just allowing too many easy points in the paint, not putting up enough resistance against this really good Seton Hall team, which is a tall task to ask, but something's going to have to change. It's going to have to be attitude coming out of the halftime for these Rebels. I totally agree. 44-26 is our score at halftime. Seton Hall with the lead. Uh, we'll take a break, come back, and uh, look at uh, other scores in the NIT for you. Also, uh, look at the first half stats, which are not going to be pretty. Rebels down 44-26 at halftime. You're listening to Run a Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. It's time for a wellness tip from Intermountain Health, official health sponsor of the UNLV Rebels. Do your feet often ache after attending a Rebels game? Here's something you might not know. If they don't, they should. We're not the sitting Rebels. We stand all game. We stomp our feet. We cheer for every play. That being said, if your foot soreness continues, may we suggest visiting one of our urgent care locations at your earliest convenience. Learn more at intermountainnv.org. Guys, basketball's a way of life. A game that puts you to the test. With every play, you tip the balance. To win or lose. The teammates depend on you. And you got their back. And the score? Well, that's your measure of dedication. We got next. Bindi Toyota's got your back. From purchasing your first car to servicing your existing one. We're the team that you want on your side. I'm John Barr, and I'll do anything to sell you a car. 
Injured in a car accident or at work? Don't go it alone. Call Shook and Stone, Nevada's premier injury and disability law firm. With over 25 years of experience, we've helped over 20,000 Nevadans recover over $1 billion in compensation and benefits. At Shook and Stone, we understand the challenges you face after an accident or injury. Medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering. And insurance companies that put their interests before yours. But you don't have to go it alone. Our team of experienced attorneys and staff is here to fight for the compensation and benefits you deserve. Whether you've been injured in a car accident, workplace injury, construction accident, medical malpractice, or any other type of personal injury, Shook and Stone have the knowledge and resources to protect your rights. For three decades, Shook and Stone has been here for you and your family. You're not alone. Call Shook and Stone at 702-GET-MORE for a free consultation. It won't cost you anything to see if we can help. The official partner of UNLV Athletics. Shook! And Stone Call 702 get more. Guys, basketball's a way of life. A game that puts you to the test. When every play you tip the balance. To win or lose. Your teammates depend on you. Well, you got their back. And the score? Well, that's your measure of dedication. We got next. Bindi Toyota's got your back. From purchasing your first car to servicing your existing one. We're the team that you want on your side. I'm John Barr, and I'll do anything to sell you a car. Premium checking from America First Credit Union is so much more than a regular checking account. It's a saves you money, makes life easier, always has your back account. Because it's absolutely loaded with fantastic benefits and features. In fact, it comes stock with so much awesome stuff. It was voted best perks by money.com. So make sure you're rocking more than a checking account. Head to America First and apply for the exclusive protection, perks, and paybacks of premium checking today. Subject to membership eligibility and conditions. Federally insured by NCUA. Injured in a car accident or at work? Don't go it alone. Call Shook and Stone, Nevada's premier injury and disability law firm. With over 25 years of experience, we've helped over 20,000 Nevadans recover over $1 billion in compensation and benefits. At Shook and Stone, we understand the challenges you face after an accident or injury. Medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering. And insurance companies that put their interests before yours. But you don't have to go it alone. Our team of experienced attorneys and staff is here to fight for the compensation and benefits you deserve. Whether you've been injured in a car accident, workplace injury, construction accident, medical malpractice, or any other type of personal injury, Shook and Stone have the knowledge and resources to protect your rights. For three decades, Shook and Stone has been here for you and your family. You're not alone. Call Shook and Stone at 702-GET-MORE for a free consultation. It won't cost you anything to see if we can help. The official partner of UNLV Athletics. Shook! And Stone Hall 702 get more. Running Rebel Basketball is brought to you by Finlay Chevrolet. Finlay Chevrolet is your home of the Woo, located on the 215 Beltway between Rainbow and Jones. South Point, drift away on Cloud 9 as you experience the finest amenities and extraordinary service with South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa. And by Finlay Toyota, celebrating 25 years in Las Vegas, driven to excellence. This is the Running Rebels Halftime show presented by the las vegas power professionals ibew local 357 and southern nevada nika all right back here in uh, new jersey john sandler with you rebels uh, struggling in the first half and trailing big 44 26 at the hands of a seton hall team that looks very much like a team that uh, should have received an at-large bid for the ncaa tournament uh, let's look at some other scores in the NIT. Last night, uh, Georgia moved on, and that's who the winner of this game will play. The Bulldogs beat Ohio State in Columbus, 79-77. And Indiana State's Cinderella run continues, uh, 85-81. They defeated Cincinnati, and they will play the winner of the VCU-Utah game that uh, takes place uh, in a little bit later this evening. VCU in Salt Lake City taking on the Utes. Uh, the winner plays Indiana State. The Sycamores making their way to Indianapolis. And you know they'll have a huge, huge following there. Uh, but the Rebels with a big hill to climb, 44-26, really struggling on the offensive end, turning the ball over quite a bit, including that final play of the half. And uh, ironically, it's the second uh, 
Second time in a row the Rebels have turned it over on the final possession to give up a bucket on the, on the last play. It worked out last time. We'll see if it does tonight. Down 44-26 at halftime. Take a break. Come back. Look at the first half stats. You're listening to Runner Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Miss a show? Check out lvsportsnetwork.com for everything ESPN Las Vegas. 1100 AM and 100.9 FM. KWWN Las Vegas. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds, which could be life-changing. I mean, you could put that money towards concert tickets for your daughter to see that singer who sings about painful breakups. And one song will inspire your little beauty to break up with that beast she's dating, Brian. Instead, she'll date someone who's nice and worthy of her love, not someone who addresses you and your spouse as, bro. And it's all because you could save money switching at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates not available in all states. Guys, basketball's a way of life. A game that puts you to the test. When every play can tip the balance. To win or lose. Your teammates depend on you. And you got their back. And the score? Well, that's your measure of dedication. We got next. Bimini Toyota's got your back. From purchasing your first car to servicing your existing one. We're the team that you want on your side. I'm John Barr, and I'll do anything to sell you a car. When fires, burst pipes, mold, or extreme weather impact your home or business, Belfour Property Restoration has your back. No matter the property damage emergency, Belfour is ready to respond. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year to clean up the damage and restore your property so you can start rebuilding faster. Belfour Property Restoration, restoring more than property. To find your local Belfour office, visit www.belfor.com. That's www.belfor.com to learn more. Deep Eddy Vodka, a high-quality vodka with an even higher purpose, to bring people together for good times. We take sunshine, stellar vibes, and laid-back fun and bottle it up for the world to enjoy. The result? A refreshingly clean, real vodka made with real ingredients, ready for you to enjoy however, wherever, and with whomever you like. Vodka is for fun. Please date drink responsibly. Deep Petty Vodka is a product of Deep Petty Distiller & Company, Austin, Texas, 40% alcohol by volume, distilled by corn. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. All right, back here at Seton Hall, Rebels down 44-26. Taking a look at the first half stats, Seton Hall, Kadari Richmond really heated up, made six of seven field goals, most of those in the final 10 minutes. Leads all scorers with 13. Dawes has nine. Drake Davis has eight. Seton Hall winds up shooting 56% from the field. Three of 11 from three. Rebels are out rebounding them 18, 20 to 18, but the Rebels uh, with eight turnovers leading to nine second, second chance or nine uh, points off of turnovers for the Pirates. For UNLV, Rob Whaley's got seven. Five for Justin Webster. Six for Caleb Boone. Four for DJ. Keelan's got two, but Keelan's one for eight from the field. Justin's two for eight from the field. The Rebels overall only shooting 34% and 0 for nine from three in the first half. And... Uh, it's Seton Hall's ability to get to the rim easily and the Rebels' inability to get anything easy on offense and turning it over too much that has led to this 44-26 advantage for the Pirates. The winner gets Georgia next week in Indianapolis, and the Rebels with a very tall mountain to climb if they're going to try to uh, earn that uh, heading into next week. But uh, we'll see if they can get it done. Down 44-26 at halftime. Stay tuned. Second half action comes up next. You're listening to Runner Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. 
Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Premium checking from America First Credit Union is so much more than a regular checking account. It's a saves you money, makes life easier, always has your back account. Because it's absolutely loaded with fantastic benefits and features. In fact, it comes stocked with so much awesome stuff. It was voted best perks by money.com. So make sure you're rocking more than a checking account. Head to America First and apply for the exclusive protection, perks, and paybacks of premium checking today. Subject to membership eligibility and conditions. Federally insured by NCUA. Injured in a car accident or at work? Don't go it alone. Call Shook and Stone, Nevada's premier injury and disability law firm. With over 25 years of experience, we've helped over 20,000 Nevadans recover over $1 billion in compensation and benefits. At Shook and Stone, we understand the challenges you face after an accident or injury. Medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering. And insurance companies that put their interests before yours. But you don't have to go it alone. Our team of experienced attorneys and staff is here to fight for the compensation and benefits you deserve. Whether you've been injured in a car accident, workplace injury, construction accident, medical malpractice, or any other type of personal injury, Shook and Stone have the knowledge and resources to protect your rights. For three decades, Shook and Stone has been here for you and your family. You're not alone. Call Shook and Stone at 702-GET-MORE for a free consultation. It won't cost you anything to see if we can help. The official partner of UNLV Athletics. Shook! And Stone Call 702 Get More. It's time for a wellness tip from Intermountain Health, official health sponsor of the UNLV Rebels. Do your feet often ache after attending a Rebels game? Here's something you might not know. If they don't, they should. We're not the sitting Rebels. We stand all game. We stomp our feet. We cheer for every play. That being said, if your foot soreness continues, may we suggest visiting one of our urgent care locations at your earliest convenience. Learn more at intermountainnv.org. Guys, basketball's a way of life. A game that puts you to the test. When every play, you tip the balance. To win or lose. The teammates depend on you. Well, you got their back. And the score? Well, that's your measure of dedication. We got next. Mini Toyota's got your back. From purchasing your first car to servicing your existing one. We're the team that you want on your side. I'm John Barr, and I'll do anything to sell you a car. When fires, burst pipes, mold, or extreme weather impact your home or business, Belfour Property Restoration has your back. No matter the property damage emergency, Belfour is ready to respond. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year to clean up the damage and restore your property so you can start rebuilding faster. Belfour Property Restoration, restoring more than property. To find your local Belfour office, visit www.belfor.com. That's www.belfor.com to learn more. Deep Eddy Vodka, a high-quality vodka with an even higher purpose, to bring people together for good times. We take sunshine, stellar vibes, and laid-back fun and bottle it up for the world to enjoy. The result? A refreshingly clean, real vodka made with real ingredients, ready for you to enjoy however, wherever, and with whomever you like. Vodka is for fun. Please date drink responsibly. Deep Eddy Vodka is a product of Deep Eddy Distilling Company, Austin, Texas, 40% alcohol by volume, distilled by corn. All right, back in New Jersey, John and uh, Curtis with you getting ready for the second half at CT. 32 points in the paint. You were just talking about it off the air. Just way too many easy baskets for Seton Hall. Yeah, if it goes back to the keys of the game, I mean, that first one, guard the dribble, keep the ball out, keep the ball in front of you and keep it out of the paint. That's the biggest problem that the Rebels are having right now. Um, and it's not just off the bounce, but a lot of those times early in the first half, it was weak side help, get, letting guys run free, cut free to the basket. The Rebels got to clean that up, and then the turnovers. Uh, you're just giving them more opportunities, more possessions. Uh, they've got four more shots on the basket right now. You've got to clean up some of those small things and take care of your responsibilities. Even though you're down by 18, the game's not over yet. The Rebels were in this game until the last minute of this half. Yeah. And when things kind of got away, they Seton Hall finished the half on a 7-0 run. So the Rebels got to tighten things up here. Um, and, and I look at it this way. 
It's been a great season. You got nothing to lose. And Absolutely if I'm a senior, right. I want to go out swinging. So you might as well do everything you can to try to continue this season as for as long as you can. Yeah, I don't think there were anybody other than that group standing over there, coaches, players, etc., who thought there was a chance this team would be playing basketball still on March the 27th right. of this year. And uh, you know, kudos to those guys, all of those guys, for getting to this point. You know, how much did the two cross-country trip, trips take out of them? You know, you'll never know. No. But uh, at the same time, you're right. It's it, if, this, if this is going to be your final half of collegiate basketball for some of these guys, give it everything you got. Yeah, and when I say go down swinging, I mean, I say that tongue-in-cheek, but almost really like you want to play so hard you might start a fight <laughs> just because of how hard you're competing. Yeah. And that's, that's the mentality you have to have to get back into a game like this when it's postseason play. You're down 18, and you add the fact that it's not a neutral court. You're on the road in their home gym. You've got to toe that line, play super hard, and try to get a couple bounces and see if you can get back in this thing before you get to about the 12-minute mark, before then you get too much pressure on you. All right, it will be Seton Hall basketball to start the second half, and a day Wusu gets the inbound pass from Richmond, gives it to Dawes. Each team with its starting five on the floor. Richmond out top, watch by Keelan Boone. Richmond just holding the ball, gives it to Dawes, curling off a pick on the pick and roll to Davis. Shot blocked by Whaley, and then a whistle, and the ball out of bounds off of Shane Noel. Nice job by Rob coming from the weak side to block that one. And again, that's that physical play the Rebels have to have. Even though you've got to let a guy get a paint touch, don't concede the basket. Richmond inbound baseline right side, 16 on the shot clock. First minute of the second half. Gets the ball in the corner to Dawes. Dawes chased by DJ, brings it back out top. Dawes shoots a long three and he hits it. 47 26. First bucket of the half is a three by Dawes. In the front court, DJ Thomas moving from left to right this time. DJ dribbling through traffic, throws it right side to Webster. Webster brings it back out top, cross court to Shane Noel. Noel drives, Noel underneath. Noel gets bumped, no call. Ton of contact, and they let it go. Wow. I mean, Shane Noel had no chance of being able to make that basket the way it went. And now uh, the Rebels forced a turnover the other way as a day Wusu couldn't handle a pass inside. Whaley and Thomas affecting him. But, boy, I mean, there's no way you're going to make a basket with that much contact. No, and, and if, if, if that's not a foul, then again, <laughs> the, the game has changed overnight. All right. Rebels in the front court. Their second possession. DJ. Into the lane, bounces down low to Whaley, and Rob loses the handle of the ball, saying, I got grabbed. Kevin Kruger looking at the official says, How can my last year when they got sent out to Boulder? So they, they're owed one. Here's Dawes stepping back. He'll fire another three. It's good. Back to back threes by Dawes to open the second half, and the Pirates keep adding on. 50 to 26, Seton Hall. Here's Thomas looping a pass inside Whaley, and he loses it at the end line, saved by Richmond. It's batted around, and Ade Wusu comes away with it. Pirates quicker to every loose ball. Here's Ade Wusu leaving for Dawes. He's going to try another three. It's good! Three in a row for Al Dawes, and Kevin Kruger needs a timeout. Al Dawes trying to stave off the end of his college career, and he's doing it marvelously. Nine points in the first half and nine in the first two minutes of the second half on three consecutive threes. The Pirates with a 27-point lead and Al Dawes for the final time in his hometown of Newark putting on a show. Unbelievable. 18 points, four for six from downtown in just 21 minutes of play. And when he hits the first three, look out because he can make them from deep now that last one was clearly a heat check. And the heat was still on. <laughs> My goodness. Pirates struggled from three-point range in the first half. They made just one of their first eight. But now they've made five of their last six. And Dawes has four of those five. Well, what do you do if you're UNLV? You're down by 27. Still 18-14 to play. Too early to fire up the bus. Here's Thomas walking across midcourt. Loops it left wing for Whaley. Whaley waits for help and a whistle and a foul call. The day Wusu called for grabbing Webster as he was trying to come free off the screen. It's the second foul on a day Wusu. First team foul of the second half. Ref just giving one back to UNLV there. Thomas will throw in from the left baseline. Gets it into the corner for Whaley. Betty Aka all over him. Dawes takes a shot to the face. 
Willie backs in against Bediaco. Spins to his left shot. Blocked by Bediaco. And a tie-up is called. It'll stay with UNLV, but Bediaco just stuffing that one right back at Big Rob Whaley. Pirates have five block shots. Bediaco, fourth in the Big East in block shots this year. Thomas again looking inbound. Throws it long out to Keelan Boone. And a whistle. The shot clock did not start. And did they call a foul? Gonna, oh, they're adjusting the shot clock, it looks like. Want to put it at 13 seconds. Over there talking with Danny Fishbane, who's been the Seton Hall official scorer for like 40 years, literally. Thomas having trouble finding an inbound pass. And out to center court, Webster has to jump it to get to it. Leaves it for Thomas, eight to shoot, backing in now against Dawes. Leaves it in the corner, Webster for a three, it's good. Webster with a hand in his face, hits the tray. That is the first three-pointer of the game for UNLV. They missed their first nine attempts before Webster drained one. Webster, a 34% three-point shooter. He was 46% last year, so it had been a rough year for him, but he can shoot. Here's Dawes with the Pirates up 53-29. Left wing for Davis. Takes to the baseline on Keelan Boone. Goes past the basket. Knocked out of his hands and last touch by Davis. So a sloppy possession there. Caleb Boone comes in for UNLV. And he will replace Noel. So the Boone brothers playing together with Welly up front with Thomas and Webster in the backcourt. Pirates have not turned it over much. 15 assists, only 5 turnovers. 53-29 Seton Hall, 17-10 to play. Here's Webster along the left side. He just hit a three. Bounce pass to Caleb Boone. Left elbow jump shot. Rolls off the rim. No good. Offensive rebound. Welly pops it up and in. So back-to-back -back buckets for UNLV. And they shave five points off the huge Seton Hall lead. 53-31. Here's Richmond walking it up. Picks up the dribble, leaves it high post, Bediaco looks inside, but Davis can't get free, so Bediaco hands off to Adewusu at the right arc. Jab step, another jab step, now he starts the drive on Webster, who stays right with him. Adewusu backing in, now fades away for the jumper, it's good from about 16 feet away, Adewusu now with seven. 55-31 Pirates. Creating his own shot. A rare move by Wusu. Here's Will. He has it knocked out of his hands by Davis. Recovered by Dawes. Comes in one-on-one -on -one against Thomas. Layup blocked by Willie, but a foul called. They're going to call that a goaltend? Yes. I guess it hit the glass before Willie knocked it away. So give Dawes credit for the bucket. He now has a 20-point game. And the Pirates go to a timeout with a 26-point lead. 16-16 to play in this NIT quarterfinal. Seton Hall 57, UNLV 31. From Learfield, this is the RWJ Barnabas Health Seton Hall Pirates Sports Network. Hey, Pirate fans, are you looking for a great snack? Then you have to try Goldenberg's Peanut Chews. They're awesome and so delicious. Peanut Chews are chewy, chocolatey, bite-sized pieces of candy loaded with crunchy peanuts. The perfect snack to have while enjoying the game. You'll never have anything else once you give Peanut Chews a try. They come in two great flavors, Original Dark and Milk Chocolatey. Find Peanut Chews at ShopRite, Quick Check, or your favorite retailer. They've been around for a long time, but hey, what's old is new. It'll become your new favorite snack. Peanut Chews the official chocolate candy of Seton Hall Athletics. Go Pirates! At RWJ Barnabas Health, we have a passion for heart health. With the largest adult and pediatric cardiac surgery programs in the state, a heart transplant program that's top 15 in the nation, a partnership with Rutgers Health, the latest technology and medical advancements, and nationally renowned care for every heart in every one of our communities. Whoever your heart beats for, our hearts beat for you. Let's be healthy together. Visit rwjbh.org slash heart. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync My Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. Affinity is member-owned and community-focused with a mission to nurture your financial well-being and make your unique dreams a reality. 
Affinity Federal Credit Union, the exclusive credit union of Seton Hall Athletics. Learn more at affinityfcu.com and become a member today. Insured by the NCUA. PSE&G reminds you that you can't see or smell carbon monoxide, but it can be deadly. Install CO detectors, and if one goes off, leave immediately, then call 911. Protect the ones you love. Learn more at pseg.com slash gas safety. 57 to 31, Seton Hall leading UNLV. 16-16 left in this one. A little bit of a minor referendum game between the Big East and the Mountain West. Mountain West got six teams into the tournament this year. The Big East, despite being the second-ranked conference by the computer, only got three in. And uh, Seton Hall standing up tall today trying to win their third straight. All three of the teams that got in are in the Sweet 16, including Creighton, who actually lost to UNLV back in December on a neutral court by 15. So that was probably UNLV's top out of conference victory of the season. Creighton and Marquette playing some exciting games and UConn not playing any exciting games blowing everybody out. Of course the corollary to that is that while Seton Hall looks like they're going to end up in the semifinals of the NIT, the other four teams that made it all lost. Including Xavier who got knocked off by Georgia in the first round and Georgia is waiting for Seton Hall if they get past this game. Here's Johnson, Jackie Johnson in the game, trying to penetrate, tries to shovel inside, gets it to Caleb Boone, who slams it home. Tough catch for Boone, but then the rest was easy. He's got eight. 57-33 Seton Hall. By the way, the officials went to the monitor during that timeout, confirmed the goaltend that gave Dawes his 20th point. Here's Richmond out front, veering to his left. Has Bediaco free inside, didn't see him. Instead gives in the corner Davis, spins along the baseline, tries to shovel inside, but it's off the hand of Isaiah Cottrell in out of bounds. Cottrell in the game for the first time. 6'11 sophomore from Las Vegas who transferred in from West Virginia. 11 on the shot clock for the Pirates. 15.40 to play in the second half. 57-33. Seton Hall has led from the outset. Richmond throwing in from the right baseline. Gets it into Dawes along the right sideline. Comes behind a Betty Aka screen to the head of the circle. Pulls up for a three. It comes up short. And the rebound pulled down by Kayla Boone. Outlet pass to Thomas, down court to Johnson. Johnson along the right side, drives the baseline across the lane, runs into Betty Aco, so he finds Cottrell on the wing for a three, and that's good. Isaiah Cottrell, a 32% three-point shooter. It's just the second three-pointer of the game for Vegas. 57-36 Pirates, 15-10 to play. Keep going back to the high pick and roll. They've been leaving Dawes open and slipping underneath it. Here's Richmond, almost lost it into backcourt. But they say it was tipped. Richmond gets a screen from Betty Aco, goes the other way, leaves for Betty Aco. Tough catch, waits for help, and then lays it in. Betty Aco, so patient after the catch. It was a tough one to reel in, waited for the traffic to clear, and then banged it. Here's Keelan Boone with a long three, no good. Caleb Boone, the long rebound. Out to Thomas for three, that's no good. And Davis has the rebound for Seton Hall. Hacked at by Caleb Boone. Davis brings it up the floor. Left wing to Dawes. Dawes drives on Keelan Boone, leans in, lays it up. No good, but a foul called. Dawes aggressively going to the bucket against the bigger Keelan Boone. And the foul called will send Dawes to the line with Pirates up 59-36 and 14-31 to go. As part of his motivation to get Seton Hall up for the NIT, he said, listen, these games are on ESPN. Maybe you're seeing... Uh, a different audience and a, a chance to show your wares. A guy like Dawes has been really playing well in this tournament. Could help his professional prospects. Dawes' first free throw is good. That's the 18th straight he's made. 94% for the year. Drilled only D.J. Davis of Butler in the Big East. Davis, by the way, is in the portal. Second one rolls around and out. So the 18 in a row comes to an end. Announcer Jinx. <laughs> and he's DJ Davis is visiting St. John's. It would be a rare intra-conference transfer. Oh, more and more now. Yep. Here's a Wusu. Here's <laughs> Cottrell out front. Hands off to Thomas. Moves left behind the Caleb Boone screen. Out to Cottrell who just hit a three. Gives to Thomas. 11 to shoot and a foul away from the ball as Betty Aco and Caleb Boone came together. And Betty Aco's called for his second foul. Second team foul against the Pirates. 14-13 to go. 60-36 to Seton Hall. The refs have really let them play, and that helps Seton Hall in this game with no Hutchins, Herbert, no Coleman, 
Uh, the bench is a little thin, and the starters are not in foul trouble. Well, it helps Vegas, too, get the bus warmed up. <laughs> and inbounds pass and an easy layup for Keelan Boone, just his second field goal. 60-38, to 38 Pirates. They have to not let down because this Vegas team has got some firepower if you let them back in it. There's Richmond at the right arc, out to Dawes, fakes the three, drives on Johnson down the right of the lane, and Johnson bumps him on the way. Johnson got the worst of it. He got hit in the face. But it's Johnson who's called for the foul. That's his first. And the team's second. Not sure how the officials decided. Dawes got fouled three times on that play. Timeout, 13.54 to go. Second half in South Orange. Seton Hall 60, UNLV 38. From Learfield, this is the RWJ Barnabas Health Seton Hall Pirates Sports Network. When something happens to your car, you might say, No! My car! But what you really need to say is something that can actually help. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And just like that, State Farm is there to help you file your claim right on the State Farm mobile app. So, just remember, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm, Bloomington, Illinois. The Mental Health Association is here for you. We understand the rising youth mental health crisis and that access to mental health services is hard to come by. The New Jersey Statewide Student Support Services Program, that's NJ4S for short, is funded by the Department of Children and Families. And we are here to provide free, that's right, free services to support students, their caregivers, and school faculty. We are professionals in mental health and wellness education, and our team is ready to present workshops and assemblies. Our therapists even provide brief counseling to students in schools and other community locations. The Mental Health Association coordinates NJ4S programs throughout Morris and Sussex counties. To learn more, contact us at 973-334-4052 or visit mhainspire.org. That's M-H-A-I-N-S-P-I-R-E dot org. Hey, Pirate fans, are you looking for a great snack? Then you have to try Goldenberg's Peanut Chews. They are chewy, chocolatey, bite-sized pieces of candy. Loaded with crunchy peanuts, a perfect snack to have while enjoying the game. Find Peanut Chews at ShopRite, Quick Check, or your favorite retailer. Peanut Chews, the official chocolate candy of Seton Hall Athletics. Dave Popkin, Gary Cohen with you here at Walsh Gym. 60-38, to 38, Pirates over UNLV. 13.54 left in this NIT quarterfinal. And this is quite a scene. The crowd has gone nuts in this ball game. All the banners hanging from the rafters here. The retired numbers like Nick Workman and Terry DeHair and Glenn Mosley and Bob Davies, Walter Dukes, Bobby Wanzer, Pep Saul. Uh, just so much history in this place. And the Pirates hoping to add a banner if they can go to Indianapolis and win a couple of games after a win tonight. It's not the NCAA tournament. But it's never a bad thing to win a tournament. Never a bad thing to get some extra games under your belt. And the Pirates are playing as well as they have all year these last two games against North Texas. And then again tonight. Once they got past the disappointment of not making the tournament and struggled a bit against St. Joe's over the first half of that game, it has really come together for them. Off the inbounds, Dawes turns down a three. Takes it to the top. Now gives right wing to Richmond. Richmond giving room. He's going to fire a three. It's good. They dared him to shoot, and Kadari did his second three-pointer of the night. He's got 16 to go with seven assists. 63-38 Seton Hall. What can he not do? Not much. Here's <laughs> Cottrell handing off right wing Johnson for a long three. It's good. Jackie Johnson, a 35% three-point shooter. His first points of the night. 63-41 Pirates. 13-20 to go. Richmond walking it up. Pirates have their starters on the floor. They got a few minutes apiece from Sanders, Tubek, and Nganga in the first half. If you're just joining us, Coleman and Hutchins Everett both unavailable. There's Richmond dribbling out of traffic. Out to center court, nine to shoot. Veers to his right, goes around Keelan Boone. Fires across court to Dewusu. Left corner for a three. It comes up short, but he runs down his own rebound. And Dewusu gets it out to Dawes. Crosses over to his left. Now back to his right. Drives on Thomas. Scoops one up and it wedges between the rim and the backboard. On the alternating possession, it'll stay with Seton Hall with 13 to shoot. 
to paraphrase Ian Eagle, a South Orange wedgie. <laughs> Somehow Brooklyn wedgie just seemed better. It's just better. But that's that's Ian. That's why he's doing the Final Four. He's the man. <laughs> we love him. He really is. They reset the shot clock to 20. Richmond throws it in. Right wing Davis. He hoists to three. It's off the back rim. No good. And Caleb Boone pulls down the rebound. Off to Thomas. Accelerates past Richmond into the lane for a floater that's good. Edon Thomas now with six. Iron lead is 20, 63 43. Still 12 and a half minutes to go. By the way, my Iron Eagle impersonation sounds eerily like Marv Albert. Well, so does his. <laughs> Here's Richmond veering right. Gives right wing to Dawes. Out front, Betty Ako. On his left to Ade Wusu. Snaps it out for Richmond. Gets a screen from Betty Ako. Doesn't use it. Backs up instead. Seven to shoot. Richmond taking his time like he's got all the time in the world. Cuts between two defenders. Lost the ball. Got it back. Tries to get it to Betty Ako. Lays it up. Good. Did it count? They're going to say we're going to check it at the next whistle, I guess. Or they're going to check it now. Checking it now. I thought it was late. Richmond, I thought, was going to shoot the ball from the left baseline, but he chose to make one extra pass. And Betty Yako laid it in off the right side glass, either just before or just after the shot clock buzzer. Just caught a replay. That's going to count. And it will count. And Betty Yako now in double figures with 11. One of his better games recently, Betty Yako had scored double figures just one of his last nine games. Five for five from the floor tonight. 16 for 17 from the floor over the last five games. And that's not all dunks, you know. It's mostly stuff around the basket, but not a lot of dunks. Under 12 minutes to play. Here's Hicks left wing firing up a three. That rattles out. No good. Rebound though slammed in by Cottrell. Nobody boxed him out. Isaiah Cottrell now with five. Six. So the shot clock resets to 20. Davis was down to about five seconds when he hit the deck. Ball boy wipes up some perspiration, and here we go. Richmond inbounds to a day. Wusu at the head of the circle. He puts behind the back, gets in the lane. Left hand scoop and rolls in, and a foul. The basket counts, and now they're going to wave it off. Yep, Davis is on the rim. I don't think that's why they waved it off. I think they called the foul before the shot. Let's see. It's a blocking foul against Cottrell. And they're saying two shots. So I guess that means, yeah, they, they probably called an offensive interference against Davis for pulling down on the rim before the ball fell through. And now the officials are talking about it. Probably deciding, does he get shots? Well, Evan Burrows clearly said two shots. So it, it was a shooting foul, and they negated the basket because of the offensive interference. But the foul still counts as a shooting foul that does not get negated. That's a strange one. Yep. Ade Wusu, 66% from the line this year. He's got seven points tonight, his first trip to the foul line. 11-13 to go. First one up with the right hand, and good. Mentioned some of the celebrities here tonight. Jeremy Hazell, one of Seton Hall's all-time leading scorers, is uh, here in the crowd. And Doug Eddard, who was the darling two years ago for St. Peter's in the NCAAs, playing under Shaheen Holloway, is here again tonight supporting Sean. Yeah, he was here Saturday as well. Ade Wusu makes them both. He's got nine. Pirates by 22, 67-45, 11-10 to play. Here's Webster moving it up. 
Leaves it left wing Hicks. He drives on a day Wusu. Hodges to the corner now for a three-point attempt by Cottrell. No good. Offensive rebound. Willie, but he threw it away. Into the UNLV bench. And Seton Hall will get it back after a timeout. 10.59 to play. Second half in South Orange. It's been all Pirates. Seton Hall 67. UNLV 45 from Learfield. This is the RWJ Barnabas Health Seton Hall Pirates Sports Network. JAG Physical Therapy provides rehabilitative recovery from sports and soft tissue injuries to knee, foot, ankle, hip, shoulder, elbow, and back injuries. Schedule your appointment with JAG Physical Therapy today and meet their experienced team of physical therapists, occupational therapists, athletic trainers, and exercise physiologists invested in your full recovery. Get back the life you love at JAG Physical Therapy, the most awarded physical therapy provider in New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. Recently named to the Inc. 5000 list. For physical therapy, occupational therapy, and athletic training services, go to JAGPT.com. This message is brought to you by Affinity Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of Seton Hall Athletics. Whether you're saving for a down payment or a dream vacation, Affinity's here to help you reach your financial goals with the award-winning Smart Start Savings account. Smart Start Savings earns 4% on your first $10,000, which is over nine times the national average as reported by the FDIC with no minimum balance and no monthly maintenance fees. Learn more at AffinityFCU.com and become a member today, insured by the NCUA. Junior Pirates Kids Club, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health. Enjoy free tickets to men's and women's basketball games, an official membership care package, and other cool giveaway items just by being a member of the Junior Pirates Kids Club, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health. To join for an annual $35 fee, please visit shupirates.com. That's shupirates.com and register today. Make them a fan for life. The Junior Pirates Kids Club, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health. Join the fight against HIV AIDS as a certified nurse, assistant, nurse, or infectious disease doctor at Broadway House for continuing care. Check out broadwayhouse.org to learn about hands-on training opportunities. And Gary, i got to tell you, these last three games at Walsh Gym have been so much fun. You, you kind of forget about what a tight loud college basketball atmosphere can be and what an advantage is to a team. The Prudential Center crowds were great this year, and it was certainly helpful to Seton Hall. They were 16-3 and three overall at home, but this has been quite a scene. I have to say, though, the previous games that we've done at Walsh Gym, and albeit many of them were lopsided games against non-conference competition, but even when they played St. John's and when they played in the NIT, it was never like this. I think that the fans are particularly revved up for this particular team, which they have loved watching this year. It's been a great team to watch. Ian Holloway has really put his mark on this team. But also, I think the snub in the NCAAs has really riled this fan base up to want more. And, and I think we felt that in these three games here at Walsh. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that is on point. And uh, the fact that these guys have shown their typical heart and come out and played hard each of these games is a testament to uh, really who they are as basketball players. Pirates have let down a little defensively in the second half, but they continue to play at a high rate offensively. Eight for 13 from the floor. Here's a lead pass to Richmond. He lays it up no good. And the rebound pulled down by Cottrell. Down court comes UNLV. Here's Keelan Boone leaving it in the corner for Johnson, looking to drive on Dawes, who stays right with him. And Johnson backs it out. D. Dawn Thomas, the starting point guard, sitting on the bench right now. Here's Keelan Boone along the left side. He's got the smaller Dawes on him. Puts it on the floor. Dawes stays with him. Drives past the basket. Goes opposite corner. Now Hicks straight down the lane. Nobody guarded him. And Hicks jams it home. So the Pirates have had some defensive breakdowns over the last couple of minutes. The lead is 20. 67-47 with 10.15 to go. That is the most open anyone has been against Seton Hall this year. The Red Sea pardon. Here's Richmond just across midcourt. Leaves it for a day Wusu. Jaquan Sanders is in the game. Pirates have gone small here with Benny Ako on the bench. Here's Davis driving to the baseline, finds Sanders in the corner, turns down the three, goes cross-court to Dave Wusu, drives in from the left, goes past the basket, kick out Sanders through his hands and out of bounds. So Jaquan, who turned down an open three in the right corner, has that ball slipped by his hands, and so UNLV has a chance for the first time in a long time to get closer than 20. Here's Keelan Boone up to Webster, right wing Johnson. Johnson takes a step in, 
Out front for Keelan Boone. Drives on Richmond. Spins past him. Kick to the corner now. Webster open three. No good. Rebound batted up in the air. Pulled down by Davis. He gets run into. No foul call. Davis brings it up himself. Down the center of the floor. Moves through the lane. Challenges Cottrell and banks it home. Dre Davis coast to coast. He's in double figures with 10. Back the other way comes Hicks. Spinning on Richmond. Lost it, but a foul call. Richmond swatting that ball away from Brooklyn Hicks as he made the spin move. That'll be the first foul on Richmond, and Hicks will get a couple of free throws. How about the exit velo? Andre Davis's line drive shot <laughs> down to our left. Brooklyn Hicks, the freshman from Seattle, just a 52% foul shooter. 9-17 to play. Pirates up by 22. First by Hicks on the way off the back rim and not even close. David Tubeck will get some minutes here. He played two minutes in the first half. Kadari Richmond will get a rest. Richmond, 16 points, four rebounds, eight assists tonight. Uh, he gets a terrific hand as he leaves. One more year, the crowd is chanting at Kadari Richmond, who has one year of eligibility left, whether he chooses to use it and whether he chooses to use it at Seton Hall, still very much up in the air. Hicks hits the second. He's got five. 69-48 Seton Hall, 9.15 to go. Dawes bringing it up now against Johnson, who bodies him all the way, and Dawes steps across. Now he's double-teamed, gets it away to Dave Wusu. He cuts into the lane, all the way to the bucket, lays it up, no good! And the rebound tipped outside and taken by Hicks. Well, they tried to trap in the half court. Pirates took advantage, but Ade Wusu just couldn't finish it. Here's Johnson with a long three from the right. No good. Rebound tipped around and grabbed by Dawes, and he's on the run back the other way. Four on two. Dawes to the center of the lane. Off to Davis. He gets his shot blocked, but a foul called. Davis going hard in from the right side. Hit the floor hard after taking the contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Caleb Boone mugged him. Uh, I mean, that was a hard foul. I think they got Keelan. Okay. So it's going to be his second. Caleb has three. Davis has made 27 of his last 28 from the line. His first one here is good. Up to 84% on the year. That's ninth in the Big East. D. Don Thomas, who was on the bench for quite some time, comes back in, the UNLV freshman point guard. Dawes has done a great job on him tonight. He's forced him left a lot. Thomas just six points. Davis makes them both. He's got out a dozen, 71-48 Pirates, 8.45 to go. Getting closer and closer to a trip to Indianapolis for the NIT Final Four. Here's Keelan Boone at the left wing, shovels it out for Webster. He hops to his left against Davis, gets the baseline, lays it up, comes up short. And the rebound pulled down by Tubek. Good defense by Davis that time. Here's Dawes down the right side, thought about a three, goes to the bucket, has it knocked out of his hand, saved at the end line by Keelan Boone. Out to center court, Webster, long pass down court to Hicks, who jams it home. So a good transition bucket there for Vegas. 71-50 Pirates, 8-10 to play. Pirates going with Dawes, Sanders, Adewusu, Tubek, and Davis right now. So a smaller lineup on the floor. Here's Davis looking to back down against Hicks. Gets to the mid post. Now gets in deeper, side of the lane. Pull up, jump shot, no good. And the rebound pulled down by Hicks for UNLV. 7.50 to play. Hicks down the right side. Explodes to the baseline on Sanders. Hooks a pass into the hands of Caleb Boone who slams it home. Boone now with 10. And UNLV gets it under 20 for the first time since early in this second half. 71-52 Seton Hall. Seven and a half minutes to play. Here's Dawes taking his time. Off to Adewusu. Straight away for Tubek. They leave Malone. He tries a three. It's off the back rim. No good. But Adewusu, the offensive rebound. Brings it back outside to kill a little more clock. Pirates up 19 with 7.15 to go. Got to run clock on each possession and keep passing the ball. Adewusu down the right side. Put it between the legs. Steps back for a three. It's good. Day Wusu becomes the fifth Pirate in double figures. He's got a dozen. 74-52 Seton Hall under seven minutes to go. Ignore what I just said. Here's Caleb Boone, a Keelan Boone getting it inside to his brother Caleb, who backs his way in against Tubek, hooks one up with a right hand off glass and good. So Caleb Boone now with a dozen to lead the way for UNLV. 74-54 Seton Hall, 640 to play. Here's Dawes in the center emblem, guarded by Thomas, taking his time. Hands it to Tubek, and now to Adewusu, 15 to shoot. 
Swings it left side for Dawes. Comes right behind a Davis screen. Dawes whips it right corner to Beck. He'll try another three. That one rattles out no good. Davis, the offensive rebound, falls down. And a foul is called against UNLV. So once again, Gray Davis hitting the floor hard. This time on the offensive rebound. And that'll take us to the under eight timeout. 6.20 to play, second half in this NIT quarterfinal game at Walsh Gym in South Orange. Seton Hall 74, UNLV 54 from Learfield. This is the RWJ Barnabas Health Seton Hall Pirates Sports Network. Operating engineers are the men and women that move mountains. And the Engineers Labor Employer Cooperative, ELEC, puts them to work. They create opportunities for the men, women, and union signatory contractors of Local 825. Repaving our roads, keeping our homes bright and warm, and even building our favorite team stadium. We understand infrastructure. That's why ELEC and Local 825 are ready to get to work. Looking for a career that really makes a difference? Consider Broadway House for Continuing Care, New Jersey's only specialized long-term care hospital for people living with HIV AIDS. We have training partnerships with some of New Jersey's best health care leaders, so you can gain hands-on experience as a certified nurse assistant, nurse, infectious disease doctor, and more. Train with the best at Broadway House. Check out broadwayhouse.org for more info. When something happens to your kitchen, you might say, This is ludicrous. But that won't fix your home. That will only get you the rapper, Ludicrous. Having trouble? Don't panic. Don't be alarmed. You need to file a claim? Holla at State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's right. You can file a claim on the app or call us. Thanks, Mr. Chris. No matter how ludicrous the situation, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm, Bloomington, Illinois. It's back, the return of the prestigious Learfield Directors' Cup honoring college sports excellence across all competitive divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow along with Old Directors' Cup on Twitter or online to see which schools will be taking home a first-place trophy in June for their season-long success. Learfield Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Gary Cohen, Dave Popkin with you from Walsh Gym in South Orange. It's been a raucous crowd because they have had lots to cheer about right from the outset. Seton Hall raced out to a 13-4 lead, and they really have never looked back. They've led by as many as 27. They're up by 20 right now, 74-54 with 6.20 to go. A date in the NIT Final Four awaits for the winner of this game. If Seton Hall wins it, it'll be Tuesday night at Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis against the Georgia Bulldogs, who defeated Ohio State last night. Georgia coached by longtime Florida head coach Mike White, who is now in his second year with the Bulldogs. They had a very rough year in the SEC, but they're playing very well in the NIT. They beat Xavier, they beat Wake Forest, they beat Ohio State. Some good wins for sure. Ohio State's been very hot. Georgia went just 6-12 and 12 in the SEC, 11th place. Davis with two free throws. He makes the first one. And just to get to that NIT Final Four would be a great achievement for this Seton Hall team that was so disappointed at not making the big dance. Davis makes them both, and he's going to get a rest now. Asada and Ganga comes on, and Davis gets a huge hand from the crowd. He's got another year of eligibility as well. It'll be interesting to see what he does. He gets the one more year chance as well. Yep. How about four more years? 6.15 to go. 76.54 Pirates. Here's Keelan Boone crossing over on Sanders. Gets in the lane. Nowhere to go. Gets it in deeper to his brother Caleb who backs in against Betty Aku who stands like a wall. His hook shot no good and then two Pirates combined to knock it out of bounds. Second time that's happened tonight. Yeah, we've seen it a few times where there's three or four white jerseys around the ball and they're rebounding against themselves. 6.01 to go. Pirates 76, UNLV 54. Seton Hall has Richmond, Sanders, Adewusu, Nganga, and Betty Ako on the floor. Inbounds comes in the left corner to Webster, who cans a three. So Justin Webster in double figures with 11. 76-57, Seton Hall, 5.50 to play. Adewusu taking his time out near center court. Webster coming up on him. Betty Ako comes up to take the pass. Leaves it on his left for Richmond. Swings it over to Nganga. 
Hand off now to Dewusu. Out front for Betty Ako, 11 to shoot. Hand to Sanders. He cuts the foul line out to Nganga. Fakes the three. Blues to his right. Hooks a pass intended for Richmond, but picked off by Keelan Moore. Here comes UNLV down by 19. Here's Thomas crossing over. Gets to the left elbow. Gets it back outside for Keelan Moore. Fakes a three. Moves to his left. Hands off to Johnson. Johnson squirms to the head of the circle. Now to the foul line. Falls down on the dribble. But it manages to get the pass away to Thomas, who moves down the right of the lane. Fades away for a baseline jump. Partially deflected by Betty Ako and taken down by Nganga. Nice play by Betty Ako to block the shot and not commit a foul. Here's the day Wusu getting to the left block as it knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. Seton Hall will keep it as we creep under five minutes to go. 4.59 on the clock. Seton Hall up by 19. Important game for Seton Hall to get Nganga and Tubek some action. See what they have in those players and especially if Hutchins Everett is out. Off the inbound, Sanders left corner tries a three. It's good. Jaquan Sanders gets on the score sheet. He hit a three against North Texas. He has one tonight. 79-57 Pirates. 4.45 to go. Here's Keelan Boone with a straightaway three. That's good. Boone's first three-pointer of the night. He's got seven. 79-60 to 60 Pirates. 4.35 to go. He's their center, but a good three-point shooter. Here's Richmond stepping across midcourt, taking his time against Thomas. No reason to rush with a big lead. Richmond gets to the lane, hooks the pass to the corner, and Ganga, he'll try a three. It's good! Sada and Ganga with his first three-pointer as a Seton Hall Pirate. He had gone 0 for 8 from behind the arc, and in the Pirates' 35th game of the year, Sada and Ganga hits his first three. 82 to 60, Seton Hall. Here's Keelan Boone going past the basket. His pass picked off by Richmond. Gets it ahead to Nganga at center court. And Ganga dribbles to the foul line, moves down the lane, hooks a pass intended for a day. Wusu, who was not going in the direction he expected, and it sails out of bounds. It'll be UNLV ball after our final media timeout. Sada and Ganga joining the three-point show. 3.53 to go, second half in South Orange. Seton Hall, 82. UNLV, 60 from Learfield. This is the RWJ Barnabas Health Seton Hall Pirates Sports Network. At RWJ Barnabas Health, we have a passion for heart health. With the largest adult and pediatric cardiac surgery programs in the state, a heart transplant program that's top 15 in the nation, a partnership with Rutgers Health, the latest technology and medical advancements, and nationally renowned care for every heart in every one of our communities. Whoever your heart beats for, our hearts beat for you. Let's be healthy together. Visit rwjbh.org slash heart. When the night calls for a celebration, you can go all out, or you can stay all in. Just you and your loved one enjoying juicy beef tenderloin steaks. Sounds like a night worth celebrating. <laughs> Together, we bring more. Fire up your day nights at beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. Join the team behind the team. The Pirate Blue Athletic Fund gives alumni and friends the opportunity to support Seton Hall Athletics, providing student-athlete scholarships, facility improvements, and individual improvements for all of our Division I programs. Pirate Blue members are the only ones who have the opportunity to upgrade their priority seating location, get priority purchase on Big East tournament tickets, and receive exclusive Pirate Blue merchandise. For more information on how to join Pirate Blue, visit them on the web at PirateBlue.com. McLoon's family of restaurants includes the Boathouse in West Orange, the Robinson Ale Houses in Red Bank, Long Branch, and Asbury Park, the Rum Runner in Seabright, CJ's in Tinton Falls, the Iron Whale in Asbury, Kahuna Burger in Long Branch. Find them all today at McLoon's.com. That's M C L O O N E S.com. Seton Hall's dominance continues here at Walsh Gym, where they are. 32 out of 33 in non-conference games since 1989. They've only lost two games here in the last 35 years, and they are dominating UNLV 82-60 to 60 with 3.53 left in this NIT quarterfinal. Everybody's had a hand in it. Kadari Richmond looks like he's out for the duration. It's another double-double tonight for Kadari. He had a points rebounds double-double in the last game against North Texas. Tonight, 16 points and 10 assists with no turnovers and five steals. Wow. 
Everybody's done it. All five starters are in double figures. Jaquan Sanders and Sada and Ganga have each added three pointers late. And the Pirates will now bring in Arda Ozdegan, the freshman from Turkey, for a little run over the final 353. Richmond's seventh double double this year, the tenth of his career. So the Pirates will have Adewu, Su, Dawes, Sanders, and Ganga and Ozdegan on the floor. 82 to 60, Seton Hall. UNLV with the basketball, 3:53 to go. D. Don Thomas lets it roll to midcourt before he picks it up. Veers to his right against Dawes. Thomas snaps it across the top to Keelan Boone. Hands off left wing Johnson for a three. Rims the basket, no good, and Sanders the rebound. Off to Dawes, and the Pirates in no hurry with 3.40 to go, up by 22. They run a little 1-3-1 one, one trap at the Pirates here. Dawes double-teamed, gets it away to Sanders, right wing for three, it's good! Sanders with a couple of threes, and Seton Hall stretches the lead to 25. 85-60 to 60 with 3.20 to go, and the Pirates can book the travel to Indianapolis. They'll be playing Georgia Tuesday night in the NIT semifinals. Here's Thomas veering to his right. Hands off to Keelan Boone. He drives on and Ganga to the foul line. Fade away, jump shot. Rims the basket, no good. Rebound, Dawes. Three minutes to go. Pirates have forced UNLV into a lot of tough twos, tough shots in general in this game. A lot of turnovers, a lot of bad shots. Too many trips to New Jersey. It's all added up to a rough night for the Rebels. Here's Sanders shoveling it inside to Ostagon. He backs his way in against Caleb Moore tries to get it to Nganga, but it's through his hands and off of Nganga and out of bounds. Mostagon trying to feed his fellow rarely used player, but it didn't quite work out. 2.42 to go. Don't have a game time for Tuesday night. The NIT will set those after the games are done tonight. BCU and Utah are meeting in the other quarterfinal that has yet to be contested. Boone with the drive, and he's fouled by Ozdegon. And so Keelan Boone will go to the free throw line with 2.34 to go. Keelan Boone's been the go-to guy down the stretch for UNLV, averaging almost 19 a game over his last five. He's got just seven points tonight. Started out at Oklahoma State with his brother, and then... He transferred to Pacific while Caleb stayed at Oklahoma State, and then they reunited this year as grad transfers. He makes both free throws. Nine points for Keelan. His brother Caleb has 12. 85-62 Seton Hall. Two and a half minutes to play. Dawes walking it up. 1-3-1 trap for UNLV, and Keelan Boone kicks the pass by Dawes, and so Pirates will inbound with 2.27 to go. Last game in New Jersey for Seton Hall this season, but there will be more basketball, April basketball. Here's a day Wusu right corner driving the baseline. Liz for Ngonga, who goes up and gets hammered by Caleb Boone. He was ready to slam it, but Caleb Boone denied that, committing his fourth foul, and Ngonga will get a couple of free throws. It's been a complete effort for the Pirates tonight. They're shooting 56% from the field, 46% from downtown. That's 11 for 24, really good three-point shooting for them and eight for nine from the line. And Ganga has attempted eight free throws this year and made five. His first one here is perfect. Six points now for Ganga. That matches his season high. And now David Tubek comes in and Dylan Adewusu comes out. Adewusu with another strong game tonight. 12 points, four rebounds, three assists. And Ganga makes them both, so he's got a season high seven points. 87-62 Seton Hall, 2.15 to play. Here's Thomas along the left sideline for the Rebels. Up top to Caleb Boone, hands it off to Sanders. Now into the lane comes Keelan Boone, and he gets fouled on his way through. <laughs> Foul called against Ostagon, who's uh, had a puzzled look on his face both times he's been called for a foul. Come on, Evan Burroughs, running clock. Let's go here. That is only the fifth team foul against Seton Hall. That was not in the act, so they will be inbounding. 2.07 to go. Brooklyn Hicks is back in for UNLV as D. Don Thomas sits down for a final time. Here's Webster coming around a screen into the lane against Tubek. Pitches it outside to Keelan Boone. Inside for his brother Caleb. He backs in against Ostagon. Hooks it over the rim and in. 
So Kayla Boone now with 14 to lead the way for the Rebels. 87-64 all over but the shouting with a minute 45 to go. Got to be bittersweet for the Boone brothers. 50-year players, their last year in college. This will be their last game. Well, they were very happy to be able to play together in this postseason. Here's Ostagon knocking over his man and he lays it in. No call. And Ostagon has just his fifth field goal of the season. That puts the icing on the cake with 90 seconds to play. 89-64 Seton Hall. Here's Webster hopping to his right. Leaves it along the sideline for Hicks. He gets in the lane. Drops it off for Caleb Boone at the foul line. Caleb gives to Johnson coming around the screen. Throws it toward the rim. Caleb Boone catches and lays it up and in. Caleb Boone now with 16. 89-66 Seton Hall. A minute eight to play. And Dawes is going to call timeout so they can get him out of the game. David Gabriel is going to come in, and Dawes, playing his last game in his hometown of Newark, gets a big ovation as he heads out. 21 points for Dawes, including three consecutive three-pointers to start the second half that blew the doors off this game. What a career by Dawes, a standing O here at Walsh. 1,793 career points for Al Dawes and still at least one more game to play. Here's Sanders straight away firing a three. It rims the basket to good. Ostagon, the offensive rebound, backs his way in. Ostagon tries to turn, but it's knocked out of his hands. And UNLV makes the steal. Down court Hicks. He drives in and lays it in. Brooklyn Hicks now with nine off the bench. 89-68 Seton Hall. 42 seconds to go. Pirates will have to take... One more shot or take a violation. Here's Nganga playing with Ostagon, Sanders, Tubek, and Gabriel. Here's the circle. Tubek with 12 to shoot, looking to back in, but dribbles it off his foot, goes back to get it, continues the dribble, fades away for a 15 footer, it hits the rim and goes in. Tubek with his first two. So every scholarship player who's played has scored. 91-68, 15 seconds to go. Here's Webster. They're across midcourt, and UNLV is not going to take another shot. They're going to let the time run out, and Seton Hall is on its way to the NIT Final Four as they pull off another emphatic victory at Walsh Gym. Seton Hall leading from start to finish and dominating the UNLV running Rebels. And the Pirates will be heading to Indianapolis for a date with Georgia in the NIT semifinals on Tuesday night. Final score, Seton Hall 91, UNLV 68. Pirates never trailed. They dominated this game. Their defense was smothering, especially in the first half. Loosened up a little bit when UNLV shot 55%. In the second half, but the horse was out of the barn at that point. 11 made threes in this game compared to only five for UNLV. Uh, Pirates passed it great. 22 assists is a big number for them, led by 10 from Gadari Richmond. He had a double-double, only 12 turnovers, and the crowd again give a standing ovation to this team. Those 22 assists, a season high. They had 21 against Xavier in their win at Prudential Center. The team is out on the floor giving a hand to the fans who have been such a huge piece for Seton Hall all season, but particularly during these three games in the NIT. All three games played on campus at Walsh Gym. All three games, the crowd absolutely packed in to this now 1,300-seat arena and making so much noise and making things so difficult for the opposition. Seton Hall got a huge home court advantage in their on-campus facility, and the players rightly giving a hand to the fans for their participation. No doubt about it, Shaheen Holloway's son is on the shoulders of Dre Davis right now as they huddle up near center court in a game where these guys could have been playing for their own stats and all that stuff. They played for each other five in double figures. We talked about the assist, but there was a great balance and unselfishness in this game. An easy team to root for. And they even got the bench guys involved. Sada Nganga with his first three-pointer of the season on a season-high seven points. David Tubek, Arna Ozdegan also got on the scoreboard. Jaquan Sanders had a couple of threes. So the Pirates who were forced to play without their two top bench guys, Isaiah Coleman and Elijah Hutchins Everett, were able to overcome that and defeat UNLV handily tonight to advance to the NIT semifinals Tuesday night 
at Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Shane Holloway is on his way over to the table, so we'll keep it right here. Seton Hall 91, UNLV 68. As Shaheen takes a seat and gets the headset on. Seton Hall defeats UNLV 91 to 68 to advance to the NIT semifinals as Shaheen shares a hug with Jerry Walker. Shaw, you guys came out of the gates tonight just flying and really put your imprint on this game defensively early on. Yeah, I thought we did a great job of coming out and kind of setting the tone early. Uh, I was kind of worried. Uh, UNLV is a really good team. I don't know. I think we caught them a little, little jet lag or whatever. I'm not sure, but really good team. Um, and I want to, you know, end it well here. Right? You know, these guys worked all year round. I'm super proud of this team, man. What they did this year so far is, is remarkable. I want to talk a little bit about the way this team has approached the NIT because they were very disappointed not to make the NCAA tournament. And you could kind of tell for the first half against St. Joe's. But ever since then, it's almost like they, they've taken this on as... Uh, as, as a new hurdle to, to climb, and, and yeah, I I'd think, like to talk a little bit about that. I think anytime you get a chance to play this game of basketball, you, you, you can't take it for granted. Marcus Tony L coming over like, for a shake. You can't take it for granted, right? Uh, and, you know, I'm really proud.